Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Pirates. Comprehension is heaven defying, explosive hammer golden lion. Chapter 1. Master, please let us go. As long as you let us go, our blood fang pirates are willing to give up all our treasures. Chen Feng looked at the pirates kneeling in a pool of blood and raised the corner of his mouth slightly. If I kill you, your treasure will also be mine. Besides, your heads are worth a lot of money. As soon as he finished speaking, the long sword was unsheathed, the head of the pirate who spoke fell to the ground, and the expression on his face was frozen. At this time, the deputy captain shouted as if he was dead. That guy killed the captain. He won't let us go, brothers, we will fight him. Seeing this, the other pirates also wanted to start trying their best and rushed towards Chen Feng at the bow of the ship. Chen Feng looked at the rushing pirates, holding the long knife tightly with a calm expression. Ten minutes later, Chen Feng wiped the long knife in his hand. In front of him was the headless body of the last pirate, and not a single one of the entire Blood Fang pirates escaped. After Chen Feng wiped the knife, he returned the long knife to its sheath. The sea breeze caressed the broken hair on Chen Feng's forehead. He is a time traveler. It has been a year since I came to the pirate world. When Chen Feng first traveled through the pirate world, he encountered a battle between two pirate groups. The original owner was an ordinary young man who was affected by two pirate groups. Chen Feng was an ordinary person in this and the previous life. After time traveling, there was no system. So he decisively pretended to be a corpse and prepared to escape after the battle between the two pirate groups was over. But after accidentally touching the corpse of a pirate, he found that he had many more combat skills in his mind, and he also understood the domineering power system, one of the strongest in the pirate world. Half an hour after traveling through time, Chen Feng looked at the corpses of pirates on the ground and raised the corner of his mouth. Yes, he used the fighting skills and domineering he learned to kill all the pirates in the two pirate groups. After killing all the pirates, Chen Feng didn't feel any discomfort in his heart. It seems that killing is not as terrible and terrifying as he thought, as if he just did a very common thing. After killing two pirate groups, he has fully accepted the fact that he has traveled to the pirate world. Looking at the corpses of the pirates, I was reminded of a profession in the pirate world, bounty hunter. He took the heads of the two pirate captains to marine and received a large sum of money, which he used to enjoy himself. After that, he searched for pirates everywhere, killed them, and after learning the combat skills, he went to marine to collect the reward. Now, one year later, he has basically killed all the pirates who are famous all over the world and have high bounties. Today is the last time he kills pirates from all over the world. It has become boring here, and he plans to visit the Grand Line and the New World. That place is much more interesting than Sihai, and more powerful people gather there. That is the place where the pirate world should go most. The most powerful pirates who have been collected, the seven warlords of the sea, the most powerful marines, General Marine, the most powerful pirates, the four emperors, the revolutionary army, and the celestial dragons who control the world are all in that direction. He wanted to see whether it was his sword that was more powerful, or the strength of these strong men. And there are other more interesting things in the world of pirates. There are fishmen, mermaids, mermaid princesses, various strange animals, and various devil fruits. And the most important thing is that Momonosuk must die. Chen Feng hated this character in One Piece deeply, and told him to kill him with a knife if he encountered him. Moreover, he has already fought against Moonlight Moria, one of the seven warlords of the sea, and Crocodile has also been killed by him. They will definitely face each other next. As for the rest of the marine generals, Chen Feng hasn't had a chance to fight yet, but he will have a chance soon. There are some unsolved mysteries about One Piece, such as whether Crocodile is male or female, the missing history, what Uranus is, and what is on the final island, etc. Chen Feng was very interested. In the original world, he couldn't do anything, but in the pirate world, he can do a lot. Chen Feng even wanted to give it a try. His life in the previous life was too boring and he was just living in it. Now that he has come to the world of pirates, he will live a wonderful life in this life. Use the knife in his hand to create his own legend. After reminiscing, Chen Feng began to collect the heads of pirates with bounties. Three minutes later, Chen Feng finished collecting the heads of the pirates with bounty. In fact, there are not many heads, only five. 
As for the rest of the pirates, they don't even deserve the bounty. After finishing the work of collecting heads, Chen Feng jumped on his ship and rushed towards the nearest marine stronghold. The ship under his feet was stolen from a pirate group composed of a group of lonely nobles. That group of aristocratic nobles knew how to enjoy themselves. This ship had many facilities and everything you need, and the navigation was basically automatic. As long as the course is set, Chen Feng can sail on the sea alone, and he doesn't have to keep an eye on it at all times. Time flies, four hours have passed. Chen Feng's ship docked and reached the nearest marine base. He wants to take the heads of these pirates to collect the bounty, then change to a better knife, and march towards the new world from the Grand Line. After landing, Chen Feng walked towards Marine's stronghold headquarters. After arriving at the door, two Marines directly stopped Chen Feng. Who are you? This is the Shieldstown Marine base. Not just anyone can break in. After Chen Feng heard this sentence, he whispered to himself. It's actually the Shieldstown Marine base. It turns out this place is Monka's territory. With a plop, a black bag was thrown in front of Marine. I'm here to collect the bounty, don't waste my time. Marine, the gatekeeper, nodded immediately after hearing Chen Feng's words. It turns out he's a bounty hunter. No wonder he came to the marine base. For bounty hunters, although these marines can't say they look down on them, they can't say they respect them either. One kills pirates, the other gives bounty, they are just using each other. Let's go in with me and check first how much bounty you can get. Chen Feng nodded, this was natural. A marine immediately led the way and walked inside, and Chen Feng followed. He followed the marine in front of him, but his eyes looked around. Menka is quite good at enjoying himself. This place is well built and he deserves to be a local emperor. Soon, a familiar figure appeared in Chen Feng's sight. The familiar figure was tied to a cross. It is none other than the celebrity in one piece, Roronoa Zoro. After seeing Zoro, Chen Feng's lips raised slightly. Unexpectedly, it happened to be at this time. It seems that something interesting is about to happen. At this time, the Marine who was leading the way turned to look at Chen Feng. I'm warning you, don't look around. Otherwise, you will end up like that green algae head over there. Oh, really? Chen Feng raised the corners of his mouth. Of course, that green algae head over there is also a bounty hunter. That guy offended Colonel Menka, so he was arrested. You'd better be careful. Colonel Monka has a bad temper. Chen Feng smiled and glanced at Marine in front of him, and released his hand on the knife. Originally, he had already wanted to take action, but after hearing the tone of admonishment in Marine's last words, he decided to forget it. This guy is not bad in nature, it is just reminding him. Chen Feng nodded in response to Marine's words. After Marine saw this scene, he turned his head and continued to lead the way. At this time, Chen Feng thought of something in his mind. He originally wanted to get a good knife to use after exchanging the bounty this time. In the original One Piece book, Munker caught Rorino Azoro because he felt that he was not worthy of using the famous sword, so he caught the guy and took the sword away. From this point of view, there seems to be a famous sword here in Menka. If nothing else happens, there will be an accident here soon. He should be able to get his hands on a famous sword while he's messing around. In that case, you can save some money. Three minutes later, Marine and Chen Feng arrived in a room. Sitting in this room is a Marine civilian employee. Marine, who was leading the way, threw a black bag in his hand towards the civilian staff. Carlos, count the pirate heads here and see who they are. Then give the bounty you deserve to the bounty hunter here. The civilian employee named Carlos immediately raised his head and looked at Marine and Chen Feng. The moment they saw Chen Feng, the civilian staff showed a look of horror on their faces. You, are, are, Shinigami. Seeing the expression and tone of the civilian staff, Chen Feng knew that he had recognized him. He shrugged helplessly. Mr. Carlos, please don't worry about who I am. Let's examine the heads of these pirates first. Okay, 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 Mr. Shinigami, all, right away. Carlos immediately stood up, quickly lowered his head took the black bag, and did not dare to look at Chen Feng. At this time, Marine who was leading the way also turned to look at Chen Feng in shock. Are you that Shinigami? Are you the Shinigami who has killed all the pirate groups in the world? Seeing the shocked expression of Marine who was leading the way, Chen Feng had become accustomed to it. 
he nodded, which was regarded as acknowledgement. Marine, who was leading the way, immediately froze on the spot. That's right, when Tatsukas exchanged the heads of pirates from all over the world for bounty, he was given the name Shinigami. Because all the pirates who met Chen Feng were dead, and no one was left alive. So Chen Feng was called Shinigami, a name that made even pirates fearful of him. As for why Marine is afraid of him, that's because after he killed a pirate with a bounty of 100 million, there was a Marine colonel at the Marine base who looked down on bounty hunters and didn't even want to give him a bounty. As a result, the Marine colonel was killed directly by Chen Feng, and then he successfully took away the bounty he deserved. However, there are still some twists and turns. After killing the Marine colonel, the rest of the Marines stopped working. Chen Feng easily wiped out the entire Marine base. When Marine investigated afterwards, he discovered that it was Tatsu Feng, that is, Shinigami. At this time, a large number of sea bounty hunters who learned the news were very happy. And they were very grateful to Cheng Feng for killing that Marine colonel. Because Colonel Marine, whom Chen Feng killed, relied on his power to often embarrass bounty hunters like them and deduct their bounties. After the death of Colonel Marine, this group of bounty hunters celebrated grandly. And they also publicized the deeds of Colonel Marine. Naturally, the investigators at Marine headquarters also knew about this matter. Because many bounty hunters have reported this matter before, but no one accepted it. Now, they originally wanted to arrest Chen Feng for killing Colonel Marine. But they were very afraid of Chen Feng's strength, and there were a lot of angry questions from bounty hunters, so they didn't dare to directly arrest Chen Feng. What's more, bounty hunter Shinigami is actually quite happy to work with them. It would be difficult if the bounty hunter Shinigami became the pirate Shinigami. So they sent people to find Chen Feng who happened to destroy a pirate group again. So, Chen Feng explained casually. Marine accepted Chen Feng's statement and judged Colonel Marine as Marine's disgrace. But that was Colonel Marine's personal behavior and had nothing to do with Marine. He completely drew a clear line with Marine. Chen Feng didn't care about this. After that incident, the personnel at the Marine Base Bounty Exchange Office all had a portrait of Shinigami. It is to prevent them from mistaking the wrong person and using some bad coping methods. After all, Shinigami can really kill people. Chen Feng, on the other hand, completely ignored the two people in front of him and began to observe the surrounding environment. This is a habit he has developed now. No matter where he goes, he must observe the surrounding environment in case of emergency. Soon, the civilian staff finished counting the bounty of five heads. After checking, the civilian staff was very shocked. These five people turned out to be pirates from the New World, and they belonged to the same pirate group. At its largest size, this pirate group had more than 500 people. He is also quite famous in New World. But I heard that in a recent war, a small team under Kaido, the four emperors, was driven out of the New World. It seemed that only 70 or 80 people escaped in the end. At this time, the civilian staff thought of Shinigami's style. If Shinigami takes action, there will definitely be no one left in the pirate group. The total bounty of these five people actually reached 800 million belly. This shows that the strength of these five people is not weak, but Shinigami is just too strong. The civilian staff stood up tremblingly, and then looked at Chen Feng. I'm sorry, Shinigami-sama, the bounty amount you received is too large, you may need to wait a moment. Chen Feng nodded, expressing understanding. The civil servant immediately breathed a sigh of relief and looked at Marina aside. Renko, Take Mr. Shinigami to sit outside. I will pick up the money for Mr. Shinigami right away. The Marine named Renko suddenly reacted with a smile on his face. Oh, okay, okay, Shinigami-sama, please come this way. Lanka motioned to Chen Feng to walk outside. Chen Feng was not polite and walked out directly. Just after walking out of the door, a figure walked towards me. After seeing this familiar figure, Chen Feng had a smile on his face. Yes, this guy is Colonel Marine of this base, Menka. Colonel Menka. Marine Renko immediately saluted with a military salute. Menka nodded, but looked at the person behind him. He had recognized who this man was. Isn't this the famous Shinigami? Why did it come to my territory today? Report to the Colonel, Shinigami is here to collect the bounty. Idiot, of course I know he is here to collect the bounty, otherwise why would he be here? 
Menka slapped Marine Renko on the head. Hey, Shinigami, what kind of pirates did you kill again? They weren't just some minions, were they? There are no big pirates in the East China Sea. Chen Feng's expression was very calm. Indeed, there are no big pirates in the East China Sea, and there are no big pirates in the Four Seas. So I plan to go to New World to see it. Oh, New World, that place is indeed interesting. A smile appeared on Menka's face. He shook his arms gently, not knowing what he was thinking. Chen Feng ignored him and walked directly to a seat beside him to sit down. Menka saw Chen Feng ignoring him and sat down directly, a hint of displeasure flashed in his eyes. But he didn't get angry. The guy in front of him was not someone to be trifled with. But he was still very angry, so he planned to kill the bounty hunter outside first. How can a useless bounty hunter be qualified to own a famous sword? I really don't understand. Mr. Shinigami, your bounty has been raised, do you need us to help you move it? The previous civilian employee had already sent the bounty. Colonel Menka, are you here too? The civilian staff immediately saluted with a military salute. Carlos, how did you get so much money? Is that guy's bounty really that big? You weren't forced to pay more on purpose, were you? Menka was very surprised and shocked when he saw this amount of bounty. How could there be so many? There are no big pirates in the East China Sea. Is the bounty too much? Did that guy send a lot of pirate heads? No, he needs to ask clearly. The money is already having an impact on his marine base. Although he can reimburse marine headquarters later, he doesn't want to lose so much money all at once. Report Colonel, Shinigami's bounty is indeed that large. Carlos replied immediately. How many pirates did that guy kill? Report to Colonel, five. Five, how could there be only five? How can five pirates have so much bounty? Are you kidding me? Menka was already very angry. Could it be that the guy in front of him dared to deceive him with the Shinigami guy? Are you really not afraid that Menka will kill him directly? Return, back to Colonel Manka. These five pirates are the leaders and backbone of the Bloodfang pirates. Their bounty is indeed so large. Carlos' voice and body were trembling. The Bloodfang pirates, why haven't I heard of them? You better not be lying to me. Colonel Menka, how dare I lie to you? They are a pirate group from the New World and have just returned to the East China Sea. Carlos almost knelt down. Monka's terror was deeply rooted in the hearts of the entire marine base. It turns out they are pirates from New World. No wonder the bounty is so high. In fact, their bounty can be higher, right? What do you think, Carlos? Yes. Dot yes, Colonel Monka. Carlos already understood what Menka meant at this time. When applying for bounty reimbursement from the headquarters, increase the bounty of these pirates and let them get more funds. This is what all marine bases do, to fish for oil and water. Of course, marine headquarters won't care about this, as long as it's not too much, it doesn't matter. Otherwise, who would work for you? If it is true, then there is no need to embarrass that guy. Menka glanced at Chen Feng again, stopped paying attention, turned around and walked out. So Chen Feng successfully received his bounty. After getting the bounty, Chen Feng slowly walked outside. Soon, Chen Feng came to a tavern. He ordered a piece of food and ate while waiting. After paying the money, Chen Feng walked out directly. At this moment, a figure wearing a straw hat appeared in Chen Feng's sight. He is the protagonist of the pirate world, Monkey D. Luffy, the straw hat boy. He is here to save the bounty hunter, Rorino Azoro. After Luffy landed, he headed straight for his destination. Chen Feng raised the corner of his mouth slightly and followed. At this time, the incident is proceeding according to the development of the plot. Luffy successfully met Zoro. Then he began to look for Zoro's knife that was stolen by Manka. Chen Feng also went directly to the place where Menka placed his famous sword. He immediately saw the knife that was taken away from Zoro. He has no interest in these three knives. As for Luffy and Zoro, he is even less interested now. Now these two are so useless, they don't even have a bounty, so killing them is useless. Soon, Chen Feng chose a knife named Bloodthirsty. This is a black knife. Menka placed it in the middle of the storage room. Obviously, this is the most valuable knife here. Chen Feng liked the murderous aura in this bloodthirsty body very much. He grabbed the black knife, took the long knife out of its sheath, and waved it gently. 
Yes, it is indeed a good knife. This knife made Chen Feng very satisfied. After taking away the knife, Chen Feng left here directly. Except for this knife, all other so-called treasures here are not in his eyes. After Chen Feng left, Luffy also found this place. He also saw Zoro's knives and took them away. Chen Feng stood at the highest point of the marine base, looking at Zoro and Luffy below. At this time, Zoro already had his knife in his hand. The marines also discovered their existence and began to besiege them. Chen Feng glanced at the battle below and found it a bit boring. Now that he has got what he wants, it's time to enter the new world. So Chen Feng jumped off the tall building and walked towards the seaside. The marines were not surprised when they saw Chen Feng leaving. But unfortunately, the accident still happened. Luffy was knocked away by Monka and flew directly in front of Chen Feng. It's really a coincidence. Luffy immediately got up and looked at Monka in the distance. And Menka's eyes also moved towards this area. Soon, Menka's face showed an angry look. Because he saw his most precious knife at this time. The knife should have been placed in his storage room, but now, the knife was hanging on a man's waist. After Chen Feng noticed Menka's gaze, he shrugged helplessly. It seems that taking away this knife today is not as easy as imagined. Shinigami, you guy, what did you do? Why is that knife in your hand? Menka asked angrily and moved quickly in the direction of Chen Feng. Chen Feng's expression was calm and he had no intention of explaining. At this time, both Luffy and Zoro also noticed the man in front of them. Is your name Shinigami? How cool! Luffy looked at Chen Feng with a smile, not paying attention to Monka's approach. Luffy, stay away from that guy! Zoro yelled. The sudden appearance of this young man caused tremendous pressure on Zoro. Of course Zoro also knows this guy, the bounty hunter Shinigami, who is an existence that scares pirates. That stupid guy Luffy, please don't say anything about becoming one piece in front of that person. Otherwise, what should I do if I get chopped with a knife? Hey, Shinigami, why aren't you talking? Why did Zoro tell me to stay away from you? Although Luffy heard Zoro's words, he had no intention of leaving at all. Instead, he asked curiously. Maybe it's because I'm a bounty hunter and you're a pirate. Chen Feng put his hand on the bloodthirsty knife handle and stared at Menka. He was hesitating whether to kill Menka directly. But soon, he let go of his hand. Forget it, I won't cut it for now, I may have to deal with Marine in the future. If he really wanted to kill him, he couldn't do it in front of so many Marines. Menka, I like this knife of yours very much. Should you give it to me, or should I buy it for 500 million belly? You guys, are you kidding me? You want to buy my bloodthirst for 500 million baileys? Menka became even more angry. The guy actually wanted to buy his black blade bloodlust for 500 million belly. He killed an entire village and then found it from the house of an old man. Moreover, the black knife is a priceless treasure, and its value cannot be measured by Bailey. Oh, looks like this, you don't want to sell it. Chen Feng put his hand on the handle of the knife again. What are you doing standing around? Surround Shinigami and these two boys. Menka yelled angrily at the group of marines who were standing there stupidly. The marines reacted immediately and surrounded the three of them. Open fire and kill them. Under Menka's order, the marines raised their guns and attacked Chen Feng and the others. Just when Chen Feng was about to take action, Luffy suddenly stood in front of Chen Feng. After seeing this situation, Chen Feng was a little surprised. Was he actually being protected? At this time, Luffy used his rubber fruit ability to bounce all the bullets back. The surrounding marines were successfully dealt with. After Menka saw that all his marine men were killed, he looked at Chen Feng angrily. Shinigami, I advise you to return my sword and join me in killing these two pirates. Otherwise, I will report it to you for helping these pirates. Sell me this knife, I don't want to get involved in your affairs. Chen Feng made his request again. He did not want to get involved in the affairs between these three people. After hearing Chen Feng's request, Menka sneered. Shinigami, I will not sell you this knife, and you don't want to stay out of it today. You must help me kill these two pirates, otherwise, you will be wanted by Marine. There are still many people in Marine headquarters who are unhappy with you, especially Tag's faction. As soon as you are wanted, those guys will definitely come looking for you, and then you will become a lost dog. 
so are you threatening me? Menka. Chen Feng's hand grasped the handle of the knife again. Whatever you think, you have no choice anyway. Is there no choice? That's not necessarily the case. Chen Feng said calmly. Then, the long knife in his hand was unsheathed, and a subtle cutting sound sounded. You guy, how dare you draw a knife on me? You. Menka's voice stopped suddenly. He felt that his eyes suddenly turned upside down, and then he couldn't see anything anymore. With a thud, a head hit the ground. That was Menka's head. Above the head, blood was spraying from the neck of a headless corpse. That's right, Menka was killed instantly by Chen Feng. Originally, Chen Feng wanted to give Menka 500 million baileys in exchange for the knife. If he didn't agree, Chen Feng wouldn't take it by force. Originally, Chen Feng had already put down 500 million belly in his storage room, which was the money to buy the knife. But Menka chose to threaten Chen Feng. Chen Feng hated others threatening him the most. Chen Feng shook his head, put the knife in its sheath, and walked outside. At this time, everyone was still in shock. Menka was killed instantly. Shinigami, is this guy so strong? Luffy's eyes widened, thinking carelessly. Zoro, however, turned to look at Chen Feng's back. That guy, his swordsmanship is indeed as strong as the rumors say. I must surpass him. The other marines looked at each other, you looked at me, I looked at you. Menka's usual abuse of power and intense oppression made ordinary marines like them very angry, but they could not resist. Menka's brutal rule also resulted in that even if Menka died in front of them now, these marines have no idea of revenge. They even have some gratitude towards Shinigami. Chen Feng walked towards the seaside. Now that the knife had been found, it was time to enter the new world. As for whether killing Menka would be wanted by Marine, he didn't care at all. Even if he is really wanted, so what? Just cut it off and it's over. Just live as you please, he has come to the world of pirates, and there are no rules that can restrain him. At this moment, Luffy suddenly reacted and ran in the direction of Chen Feng. Luffy, what do you want? Didn't I tell you to stay away from that guy? Do you know that guy is dangerous? Zoro caught up with Luffy and cursed. Zoro finally understood the straw hat boy in front of him. This guy was completely careless. Luffy ran and turned to look at Zoro. Zoro, I want that guy to join my pirate team, what do you think? What, are you crazy? That guy is Shinigami. He is the most powerful bounty hunter in the world. How could he join your pirate group? That guy has killed more pirates than you've ever seen. Are you kidding me? Obviously, Luffy didn't listen to Zoro's words at all. No matter what, I want that guy to join my pirate group. That guy is really too strong. And don't you think the name Shinigami is cool? It would be interesting to have him join. After Chen Feng arrived at the shore, he walked to a nearby store to buy some supplies. At this time, Luffy's voice sounded in his ears. Shinigami, do you want to join my pirate team? Chen Feng turned to look at Luffy, the corner of his mouth raised. Are you sure you want to invite me to join your pirate group? Of course I'm sure. Just join my pirate group and travel with us later. I, Luffy, want to be the man of One Piece. One Piece, it's a rather boring ideal. But why should I join your pirate group? Your pirate group doesn't even have a ship, right? Chen Feng teased Luffy with a smile. Luffy wanted to say something else, but at this moment Zoro stopped him directly in front of Luffy. Luffy, you better not invite this guy. This guy has killed more pirates than you have ever seen. And this guy will not join your pirate group. He is the Shinigami who makes pirates fearful. But at this moment, Luffy stuck out his head from behind Zoro. It's okay, Zoro. Didn't I just invite him because his name is Shinigami? Zoro. Don't you think it's cool to have a Shinigami in our pirate group? Luffy, how many times do you have to tell me to understand that there is no way this guy will join you? And if you provoke him, it will be very troublesome. I can't beat him for the time being. Although Zoro was very unwilling, he admitted the fact that he really couldn't beat Chen Feng. Hey, Shinigami, do you want to join us? Just join us. It would be fun to travel together. Luffy still didn't give up. He still wanted Chen Feng to join their pirate group. Zoro was very helpless after hearing what Luffy said. This guy is hopeless. Once he becomes stubborn, he won't be able to control him at all. Zoro also thought of what that guy did when he invited him. Why should I agree with this guy? 
I really don't understand. Chen Feng fell into deep thought after hearing what Luffy said was interesting. From a fun perspective, joining the Straw Hats seems pretty good. These guys are not easy to worry about at all, but they can be fun. Now that I have come to this world, I still need to find some interesting things to challenge. Hey, Straw Hat, if I join your pirate group, should I be the captain? Neither of you can beat me. Why do you want to be the captain? No, the captain must be mine. How can One Piece serve as a crew member? The captain must be me. Luffy immediately rejected Chen Feng's proposal. How could he be someone else's crew member? Then how about I become the deputy captain? Chen Feng spoke again. Vice Captain, Luffy seemed to be thinking. At this time, Zoro was stunned. Why did this guy Shinigami agree to join? What the hell was that guy thinking? And he wanted to be captain and first officer. Luffy, don't you really want this guy to join us? Soon, Zoro realized something. It's really possible that Luffy would agree to let him be the vice captain. If you are asked to be the deputy captain, will you join us? Sure enough, Luffy, who was deliberately pretending to think, said this. In fact, as long as he is not the captain, Luffy can accept anything. He pretended to think, just because he didn't want others to notice it. Although Luffy is simple and one-minded, he is not stupid. Okay, if I am the deputy captain, then I will join you. Chin Fang nodded in agreement. Great, great, Shinigami joins us. My vice captain is Shinigami, he's so handsome. Luffy danced with joy. While speaking, Zoro's eyes showed caution, and he immediately put his hand on the handle of the knife. Shinigami, what do you want to do? You guys, haven't you always spared no pirates? Why did you suddenly stop being a bounty hunter and become a pirate? Chin Feng turned to look at Zoro. It seems like being a pirate or a bounty hunter should be my freedom, Roronoa Zoro. And don't forget, I am the vice captain now, and more importantly, you are very weak now. You guy, Zoro immediately pulled out his knife. Zoro, what are you doing? Why did you draw a knife on the deputy captain? Luffy reached out and pressed the knife in Zoro's hand. We will be partners from now on, so we should get along well. Shinigami, you guy, I will definitely surpass you in the future, and I will not let you hurt Luffy. Zoro took his hand away from the handle of the knife and said this seriously. When Chen Feng heard this, he smiled. You will have many opportunities to challenge me in the future, come on. By the way, Shinigami, what's your name? My name is Luffy, and I want to be the man who becomes One Piece. My name is Chen Feng, you can call me Shinigami. It's just a title anyway. It turns out that Shinigami's name is Chen Feng. Sure enough, Shinigami sounds more handsome. Chen Feng ignored Zoro, who looked wary, and turned towards the store next to him. Let's go, Luffy, it's time for us to buy supplies, and then we'll start heading towards the Grand Line. It will be more interesting over there in New World. If you want to become One Piece, the sooner you get there, the better. Really, then we have to set off quickly, I can't wait to become One Piece. Luffy also ran towards Chungfang. Zoro looked at the backs of the two people and frowned. He couldn't figure out what Shinigami was thinking and why he mentioned New World. From what that guy said, he seemed to want to go to the New World as soon as possible. The New World has a lot of bounties and very high pirates. Could it be that that guy's destination was originally there? No, we must not let that guy hurt Luffy. I must stop that guy's conspiracy. Thinking of this, Zoro immediately followed Chen Feng and Luffy. Ten minutes later, Chen Feng had already purchased the items and the supplies arrived in front of his ship. Wow! Vice Captain, this is your ship. It's so big. It's bigger than ours. If you want to say that, it's true, Luffy. Chen Feng walked directly towards his ship. Luffy immediately jumped on the boat and started looking around. He looked around the entire ship curiously. Vice Captain, what's the name of your ship? Chen Feng put down the supplies in his hand. The name of the ship. That thing doesn't have one. Why doesn't your ship have a name yet? Luffy had confusion and a hint of surprise on his face. He is very happy now. This ship doesn't have a name yet, so as the captain, can he give it a name? Vice Captain, can I give this ship a name? Luffy turned his head and looked at Chen Feng with a pleading look on his face. Okay, Chen Feng's tone was very nonchalant. As the deputy captain, there is no problem in providing a boat. Anyway, 
it's just the name of a ship, and he doesn't care. After receiving Chen Feng's permission, Luffy was very happy. He began to think hard and wanted to choose a name for his first pirate ship. How about we call it Shinigami Mary? Luffy said the new name he thought of very excitedly, and then looked at Zoro and Chen Feng. Vice Captain, what do you think of this name? Shinigami Mary no. Chen Feng was a little helpless. Is this name really suitable for a pirate ship? He always felt that this name was a bit embarrassing. Luffy considered that this was his ship, and Luffy still couldn't forget the Mary. It's up to you, I don't care about this. Chen Feng waved his hand and expressed his opinion. Hey, Zoro, what do you think? Luffy turned to look at Zoro. I don't think it's very good. Zoro is very wary of Chen Feng now. He feels that Chen Feng must have other ideas, so he subconsciously refutes things about Chen Feng. Isn't it great? What should it be called? Luffy lowered his head and began to think seriously. Otherwise, let's call it the Flying Mary. Chen Feng looked at Luffy and scratched his head, feeling helpless. This name sounds really good. He is worthy of being the deputy leader. Luffy immediately gave Tatsufang a thumbs up. If you think it's good, then let's settle it. Don't worry so much. Okay, it's time for us to set off. I have already set the next destination just now, I just need to wait. After saying these words, Chen Feng lay directly on a rocking chair. Vice Captain, doesn't this ship need someone to pilot it? Luffy was very confused. It is not needed at present. Under normal circumstances, it can drive automatically. Chen Feng was rocking the rocking chair while eating fruit. Is it so powerful? Then there is no need for navigators. Luffy's eyes widened and he was very shocked. How can there be no need for a navigator? A ship like this that can drive automatically cannot pass through those sea areas with weird weather. Zoro interjected from the side. Indeed, so we need to find a navigator to help us sail the ship. Chen Feng nodded in agreement. If it's a navigator, where should we look for it? This question gave Luffy a hard time. Chen Feng swallowed the fruit and said with a smile. I leave this question to you, Captain. No problem, then leave it to me. Luffy agreed. Soon, a confused expression appeared on Luffy's face, and he looked at Chen Feng. But where should we look, Vice Captain? I already have a candidate in mind. How about I take the captain to see that guy? If the captain thinks that guy is good, then let him be our navigator. Really, is there really a candidate? Then let's go and see. Luffy, don't believe that guy's words, that guy must have a conspiracy. Zoro immediately reminded that he didn't believe the Shinigami in front of him at all. Zoro, why do you say such things? The vice captain is our partner. How could he harm us? Since the vice captain said there is a good candidate, let's go and take a look. If that candidate is really good, it won't be too late for us to invite him on board. Zoro clenched his fists now. Luffy didn't believe him at all, and he trusted this Shinigami very much. Moreover, Luffy's attitude made him feel that he, Zoro, was a bad person. It seemed that he had been doubting his partner. No, he must not let this guy's conspiracy harm Luffy. Luffy, this guy is too simple, he will definitely be deceived by that guy. Now that he has joined Luffy's pirate group, he must be responsible for him. As long as the navigator's candidate does not meet his expectations, he will not let that guy join. Chen Feng looked sideways at Zoro. He probably knew what Zoro was thinking, but he didn't care. And it looks pretty fun. Zoro regarded him as a bad guy and as if there was some huge conspiracy. And now he is the deputy captain. Luffy, the captain, completely trusts him. Looking at it this way, Zoro seems to have become the bad guy. Things are getting more and more interesting. It would have been interesting to join the Straw Hats, but now it has become even more interesting inside. Chen Feng is looking forward to what will happen next. Since Zoro would treat him like this, how would the other members of the Straw Hats who joined him later treat him? I really want to know sooner. Vice Captain, I'm hungry. I want to eat meat. If you want to eat meat, go get it yourself and eat whatever you want. After getting Chen Feng's permission, Luffy was as happy as a big child. He can finally eat meat. That's right, the financial power is now in Chen Feng's hands. There is no way, who makes these two guys in front of me so poor? At this time, Zoro was also hungry. Not only that, his stomach growled unsatisfactorily. 
After hearing this cry, Chen Feng raised the corners of his mouth. Zoro, go and eat too. Don't worry, the vice captain won't starve you. And the food is not poisonous, and you personally selected it. You don't have to believe me, but you have to believe in yourself. After Zoro heard Chen Feng's words, he clenched his fists. He didn't want to eat the food bought with Chen Feng's money, but in order to prevent Chen Feng from poisoning, he did check it himself. The final results are indeed non-toxic. But he won't eat it. How can I eat Shinigami food? That guy must have a conspiracy. Even if he is not poisonous, he still has a conspiracy. But soon, Zoro was defeated. His stomach protested even more ferociously. Listening to the sound that sounded like a drum, Chen Feng couldn't help but laugh. Zoro, stop holding back and go eat. Otherwise, if the captain knew that I starved you to death, wouldn't you be afraid that the captain would fight me to death? If the captain wants to fight me, what do you think I should do? Chen Feng's teasing tone rang in Zoro's ears. Zoro clenched his fists, believing he could still hold on. He took a bite of a large piece of meat and then thought to himself. I can definitely hold on. Looking at Zoro who was defeated by Moxiong's law, Chen Feng shrugged helplessly. Vice Captain, when will we reach the next land? After three hours of sailing, Luffy was already a little bored. I'm not sure, but it should be soon. Chen Feng was still lying on his rocking chair. This was also the case on his previous voyages. Anyway, when he saw an island, he would go up and have a look. If he encountered pirates, he would just kill them. In this case, I will continue to eat. Luffy once again had a leg of meat in his hand and began to eat it. At this time, Zoro was meditating. At this moment, a huge bird flew over and grabbed Luffy who was eating the meat leg. Help, help me. Luffy's shout caught the attention of Tatsuka's and Zoro. Chen Feng immediately looked in that direction. After discovering that it was the bird, he let go of the knife in his hand. Zoro immediately pulled out his knife and wanted to chop down the bird. But after the bird caught Luffy, it flew away quickly, giving Zoro no chance at all. Watching Luffy flying further and further away while shouting for help, Zoro put down the knife weakly. Shinigami, you guy, why didn't you take action just now? If you take action, you can definitely save Luffy, right? Zoro turned his head and looked at Chen Feng angrily. Don't worry. Zoro, we'll see the captain again soon. Chen Feng's indifferent words rang in Zoro's ears. You guy, do you know what you are talking about? I have long suspected that you have some conspiracy, and now you are refusing to help. Did you know that Luffy can't swim after eating a devil fruit? Of course I know he ate a devil fruit and I know he can't swim, but what does it matter? He's safe. Chen Feng didn't even open his eyes, and the rocking chair continued to rock. You guy. Zoro's face was full of anger, but he still didn't use the knife on Chen Feng. Zoro, go to the wheelhouse, increase the speed of the ship to the maximum, and forget about the rest. We will find Luffy soon, don't worry. Are you giving me orders? Zoro looked at Chen Feng with dissatisfaction. That's right, I'm giving you orders. I'm the deputy captain, can't I still give you orders? Are you kidding? Zoro pulled out his knife again. Besides, do you really not want to find Luffy? Chen Feng's fluttering words shocked Zoro's heart. Shinigami, this guy made him so angry, but there was nothing he could do. So Zoro put down the knife again and walked towards the cabin. Following Chen Feng's order, he adjusted the speed of the ship to the fastest speed. After that, he came to the bow of the ship and kept looking at it. Three hours later, the Fatian many where Chen Feng and Zoro were located arrived at the mooring of a small town. Shinigami, where should we find Luffy next? Zoro looked at Chen Feng. Chen Feng did not respond to Zoro, but jumped off the boat. Zoro was very angry when Chen Feng didn't respond, but he still followed him. Chen Feng walked directly in front of an ordinary town citizen. Uncle, have you seen a boy wearing a straw hat? There is also a beautiful girl with curly hair. The ordinary town citizen looked up at the person asking the question. He took away the banknotes in front of him and replied. The straw hat boy and the curly haired beauty you mentioned were captured by Buggy. Buggy's headquarters, in that direction. Following the direction of the townspeople's fingers, Chen Feng looked over and nodded slightly. Thank you very much, uncle. After saying this, Chen Feng walked directly in that direction. 
At this time, Zoro was very confused. How did that Shinigami guy know that Luffy would be in this place? And from what that guy said, Luffy seemed to be with a girl. How could he know this? Could it be? This thing was designed by that guy from Shinigami from beginning to end. Yes, that's absolutely the case. Zoro was very happy because he believed he had found the truth of the matter. He planned to tell Luffy about this and find a chance to escape from the clutches of the Shinigami. For this reason, he must find Luffy first. So Zoro increased his speed, directly surpassed Chen Feng, and ran quickly towards Buggy the Clown's headquarters. Chen Feng looked at Zoro who was leaving and smiled. Things are getting more and more interesting. He had to go over and join in the fun. Chen Feng immediately stepped into the air and left. The two townspeople behind him were very shocked. They actually saw a guy flying in the air. Not only were these two witnesses shocked, but everyone who saw this situation was shocked. Look, that guy can walk in the air. A child shouted. Everyone on the street was attracted by the child's shout, and then looked into the air. Sure enough, there was a person walking in the sky. Many people started shouting because they saw something that almost subverted their cognition. At this time, Zoro also heard the voice. He immediately turned his head to look, and then a shocked expression appeared on his face. Shinigami, that guy is actually flying in the air, and he's very fast. It is almost surpassing him now. Impossible, how could that guy do this? At this time, Chen Feng's voice sounded in Zoro's ears. Zoro, Deputy Captain, I will take the first step. You should follow as soon as possible. After reading this sentence, Chen Feng continued to accelerate and soon disappeared from Zoro's sight. Chen Feng didn't care about their shock. This is just an enhanced version of Moonwalk among the six marine styles. With the heaven-defying blessing of his understanding, Moonwalk is no longer an ordinary Moonwalk. Walking in the air is just very basic. As for the other six moves, Chen Feng also has more advanced methods of using them. As for how he obtained Marines Taijutsu, it's actually very simple. He actually killed quite a few Marines. Naturally, the sixth form of Marine can be understood through corpses. Not only that, he can also understand their fighting skills and other abilities by touching dying humans. Now Chen Feng doesn't have an accurate understanding of his own combat effectiveness. The main reason is that he has never met an opponent who can take his own blow. But one thing he can be sure of is that his current combat power is at least as high as that of a general. And his combat power will continue to increase. Soon, Chen Feng came to a place similar to an amusement park, which was the headquarters of Buggy the Clown. Chen Feng saw the two people below at a glance. That's Luffy and Nami. At this time, Luffy has been captured by Nami, and wants to sacrifice him to Buggy in exchange for her sea map. After seeing this situation, Chen Feng quickly walked towards that place. In the shocked eyes of everyone, he came directly in front of Luffy. Vice Captain, why are you here? How did you find this place? Luffy's eyes widened and he asked Chen Feng. Chen Feng put his hand on the handle of the knife, drew out the knife and put it away in one go. A crisp sound sounded, and the chain was cut off and fell to the ground. Thank you, Deputy Captain, for saving me. Luffy began to move his hands. At this time, the shocked Buggy had already reacted. You guy, it's Shinigami. Buggy had a look of fear on his face. Not only Buggy looked frightened, but all the other pirates were already lying on the ground. Long time no see, Buggy. Chen Feng smiled and greeted Buggy. The clown buggy was chopped down by Chen Feng half a year ago. But since this guy made him realize the ability to split the fruit, he didn't hack this guy to death. Of course, the most important thing is that this guy's bounty is too small, and Chen Feng looks down on him. At this time, Nami on the other side became even more frightened and collapsed directly to the ground. Is this guy Shinigami? Is he the murderous demon? How did I meet this guy today? And what did the straw hat boy call him just now? Vice Captain. So, pirate hunter Shinigami is now a pirate. How is that possible? This is unbelievable. But Nami thought of another possibility. So what if he is a pirate? He seems to be still the murderous guy. I won't be killed by him. Vice Captain, do you know this red-nosed guy? Luffy sounded very confused. We barely know each other. I chopped him once before but this guy kept begging for mercy, so I didn't chop him to death. 
They are one of the few pirates who are alive in my hands. Chen Feng smiled and answered Luffy's question. Oh, so that's it. Luffy's ability to accept is obviously very strong. He has accepted this fact and doesn't care. Of course he knew that his deputy captain was very strong, but wouldn't the stronger his deputy captain be, the better. By the way, deputy commander, I found the navigator. Luffy shouted happily and looked at Nami aside. Vice captain, what do you think of her joining us as a navigator? Chen Feng followed the direction of Luffy's finger and looked at Nami. Nami, why did you fall? Luffy was very confused and helped Nami up. Although Nami was helped up at this time, she felt Shinigami's gaze. Her body was trembling. No, it's nothing, I just accidentally slipped. After seeing this situation, Chen Feng laughed. It seemed that he had brought too much fear to these pirates. Nami became even more frightened after seeing Shinigami smile. What did you see just now? Shinigami's smile. Does that mean she is going to die? She is going to be hacked to death by Shinigami. Luffy, I have no objection, and she is also the person I want to recommend. Little thief cat, Nami. What? It turns out that, Vice Captain, the navigator you want to recommend is also her. That would be great. So, you guys also know each other. It seems that you know a lot more people than I thought, Vice Captain. It's so interesting. As expected of Shinigami, worthy of being my deputy leader. Luffy proudly put his hands on his hips. Nami didn't feel as proud as Luffy at all, and his heart felt cold at this moment. Shinigami actually knows his name. Is there anything more terrifying than this? No, nothing. Did Shinigami remember her name specifically to kill her? Does she, a thief, deserve what Shinigami does? Hey, Nami, join us and become our navigator. Then we will travel together. Luffy once again extended an invitation to Nami. At this time, Nami suddenly reacted. Wait, the straw hat boy in front of me is really the captain of Shinigami. If you join his pirate group, doesn't that mean you are a crew member with Shinigami? If that's the case, then her hometown can be saved. If that guy is Shinigami, it seems possible to let him kill those pirates. But is she really qualified to let Shinigami help him get revenge? No, she doesn't. Soon, Nami cheered up. She is not the kind of girl who relies on others, she only has to rely on herself. So what if it's Shinigami? So what if he kills her? Although she is afraid of death, she doesn't care. She, Nami, must use her own power to save the village and save her. If you want to save the village, you need a sea map. And if you want to get the chart back, you need it. Nami immediately looked at Buggy. That's right, the chart is in that guy's hand now. Buggy, I have captured the person you want. Hey Tu, should you return it to me? The frightened Buggy was awakened by Nami's loud shouting. What is this guy you caught? Do you know, little thief cat? You captured him, and you still dare to ask me for a chart. This straw hat boy is. This straw hat boy is that captain. At this time, Luffy also shouted. Red-nosed guy, give Nami her chart back. Otherwise, I will definitely beat you away. Luffy was already waving his fist, and if Buggy didn't agree, he was ready to go straight to it. After Buggy heard what Luffy said, he didn't look at Luffy, but looked at Chen Fang. Chen Fang put his hand on the handle of the knife. Buggy, hand over the chart, don't waste my time. Sir Shinigami, I will hand over Kaidu immediately. Don't be angry, I won't waste your time, absolutely not. Buggy respectfully took out the chart, walked to Chen Feng, lowered his head and handed the chart to Chen Feng. Chen Feng took the chart and threw it towards Nami. Nami caught the chart in one fell swoop and then froze on the spot. She was very puzzled at this time. Why would Shinigami help her regain the sea chart? Yes, Nami realized it clearly. Clown, that guy Buggy is willing to hand over the chart so easily, it's definitely not because of the straw hat boy in front of him. All because of this Shinigami. Only those who have been pirates know how powerful the name Shinigami and this person are in the East China Sea. It is said that none of the pirates who encountered the Shinigami survived. This rumor is definitely more than just a rumor. Because I think this is a rumored pirate, and he is already dead. It was at this moment that the smell of urine spread, and the sound of dripping liquid was heard. It turned out to be Buggy the Clown who was scared to death. At this time, Buggy the Clown remembered the terrifying night half a year ago. 
That was the most terrifying night in his life, the one he least wanted to recall, and the most humiliating night. I still remember that night, the guy in front of me came to his base camp. He was in high spirits at that time. As a man who had been on the ship of One Piece, Buggy the Clown was infinitely proud. So when this guy called Shinigami came to visit, he was very disdainful. I think this so-called Shinigami is just a rumor from those junk pirates. But the guy in front of him told him with the knife in his hand that Shinigami was not a rumor. And he thought that since he had the ability to split the fruit, he didn't need to be afraid of people who used sword skills. Under that guy's knife, his splitting ability was useless. Each of Shinigami's swords struck his body, and every sword was extremely painful. After he was cut into dozens of pieces by the guy in front of him, his consciousness was completely unconscious. Although I don't know why he was still alive in the end. Maybe it's because the guy in front of me doesn't want to kill him, maybe it's because of the ability to split fruits. In short, he survived in the end, but those knife marks will always remain on his body and cannot be dissipated. And today was also a very embarrassing day for him. He was so scared that he peed. And it was physically frightening. What does it smell like? It stinks. Luffy held his nose and looked like he was about to vomit. Chen Feng turned to look at Buggy the Clown and saw his pants soaked in urine. What, are the crew members of One Piece now scared to death? Chen Feng's tone was very calm, but Buggy the Clown could sense the disdain in it. Yes, Buggy, the Clown, was once a crew member of One Piece, but now he has fallen to this point. No. He is a crew member of One Piece, and he cannot live in such humiliation. Shinigami, I want to challenge you. Either you die today or I die. Buggy the clown raised his knife and pointed it at Chen Feng. Chen Feng's face became a little more serious and he put his hand on the handle of the knife. Since you want to die, then I will grant it to you. In today's battle, it's not certain who will die. Buggy the clown shouted and rushed towards Chen Feng. Chen Feng pulled out his long knife and slashed it down. Buggy the clown was instantly cut into dozens of pieces. After seeing this scene, Chen Feng did not sheath the sword. The voice of Buggy the clown sounded from all directions. Shinigami, I'm not that easy to kill now. I should thank you. Now I have truly mastered the ability to split fruits. Let me show you the power of split fruit again. Wow, this red-nosed guy is so powerful. He was cut into dozens of pieces and he can still speak. Luffy on the side was already dumbfounded, he was shocked by the abilities of Buggy the Clown. When Chen Feng saw this scene, his expression remained calm. The true power of split fruit. If this is the only manifestation, you can already die. Are you kidding me? You can't cut my body right now. So what if you have that ability? It's useless if you can't hit my body. Buggy. The clown who split into dozens of pieces, taunted and rushed towards Chen Feng. Not only that, his knife also split. Chen Feng looked at Buggy, the clown, who was charging towards him, and slashed him with his long knife. Countless black blades flew out, the clown Buggy's voice suddenly stopped, and his split body was completely chopped into pieces. Buggy the clown, formerly a member of the One Piece crew, dies. He chose a heroic death and did not continue to live an ignoble existence. Chen Feng also respected his choice and used the sword light lingering from his armed domineering aura to chop his body into pieces. There was a slight sound, and Chen Feng had already sheathed his sword and walked outside. Come on, Luffy, it's time for us to continue on our way. Ah, Vice Captain, is that red-nosed guy dead? Luffy still didn't fully understand the situation. Yes, that's right that guy is dead, we should continue on our way. By the way, don't forget to bring our navigator with you. Chen Feng walked out of this place without looking back. Okay, Vice Captain. Luffy turned to look at Nami who was completely stunned. Let's go, Nami, let's go together and be our navigator. At this time, Nami has not yet recovered from the shock. What happened before her eyes just now was that the clown buggy was killed directly by Shinigami and it was completely chopped into pieces. If that knife was aimed at her, she would have the same ending. Wait, Nami suddenly woke up. What Shinigami said just now is, our navigator. Does this mean that she has now become the navigator of the Straw Hat Pirates? But she didn't agree at all. But then she thought about it, did she really dare to refuse? That was Shinigami. 
No, she must find a way to escape from the clutches of this Shinigami. Yes, she must leave. At this time, you must be calm, you must be calm, and think carefully about how to get rid of Shinigami. Nami, what are you doing? Answer me. Luffy started urging again. He didn't understand why Nami was in a daze here and ignored him. The panic on Nami's face slowly dissipated, and her confident expression suddenly returned. She looked at Luffy. It's not impossible for me to join you as a navigator, but I have a condition. What are the conditions? Nami, come and listen, we will help you. So Nami began to put forward her conditions. After a little thought, Luffy agreed to this condition. After hearing Luffy agree to the conditions, a smile appeared on Nami's face. The straw hat boy in front of me is really easy to deceive. Fortunately, that guy Shinigami is not here anymore, otherwise she would not dare to raise any conditions. Now that the straw hat boy has agreed to the conditions, the next step will be much easier. Although judging from the situation just now, it seems that Shinigami is the real person in charge of this pirate group. But the nominally stupid captain in front of him is not completely worthless. Nami, let's go, the vice captain can't wait any longer. And we have to find another partner. I know where that guy Zoro is, but he's not with the vice captain. Luffy walked outside, muttering with confusion on his face. When Nami saw this, she immediately followed him. She couldn't break up with Shinigami yet. Chen Feng walked out of Buggy's base camp and saw Zoro walking towards him. Shinigami, tell me, where is Luffy? Zoro drew his sword again. Looking at Zoro with a murderous look on his face, Chen Feng remained very calm. Zoro is too weak now. Do you care about an ant showing its teeth and claws in front of you? Not at all. Chen Feng didn't stop and walked straight past Zoro. At this time, Zoro's face had turned red. He already wanted to swing the sword when Chen Feng came over, but a strong pressure prevented him from swinging the sword. No, it's not just that he can't swing the knife, it's already difficult for him to even stay standing. Zoro, as the first officer, I will give you a piece of advice. When your strength has not reached a certain level, don't try to draw a sword against someone who is much stronger than you. With a plop, Zoro could no longer hold up under the strong pressure and fell to the ground. Zoro fell to the ground, clenching his fists and knife. He knew that the gap between him and Shinigami was very big, but he didn't expect it to be so big. Just a momentum, he was completely unable to resist. What else is there to say about wielding a knife? Zoro, why did you have a conflict with the deputy captain again? Luffy ran to Zoro and helped Zoro up. Zoro, didn't I tell you? The vice captain is our partner, how can you attack him? Obviously, Luffy clearly saw Zoro drawing his sword. Luffy, don't be deceived by that guy again. Our coming here was all because of that guy's conspiracy. How else would that guy know to come here to find you? This is all his conspiracy, you must believe me. Zoro held Luffy's hand and said weakly to Luffy. Zoro, are you kidding me? How could the deputy captain harm us? If the deputy captain really wanted to harm us, we might have been killed long ago. Isn't that what you think? Zoro, Luffy, you. Zoro was completely shocked when he heard Luffy's words. He didn't realize at all that Luffy actually knew the facts much better than he did. That's right, Luffy had long realized that Chen Feng had no murderous intentions towards them. This is Luffy's innate talent, being able to tell whether others are hostile. As for why Shinigami didn't kill them, maybe it's because they are too weak, maybe it's for some reason. But it doesn't matter, they are partners now. And Shinigami didn't do any harm to them, so they are still partners. Chen Feng turned to look at Luffy, and Luffy looked at Chen Feng with a smile on his face. Chen Feng felt all sincerity in Luffy's smile. The straw hat boy in front of him indeed regarded him as a companion. Chen Feng didn't care about this, since he chose to join the straw hats. As long as he has no intention of quitting, he will not take action against these guys. There are no rules in the world of pirates, Chen Feng can do whatever he wants. But doing whatever you want doesn't mean there is no lower limit. If there is no lower limit, Chen Feng will not be Chen Feng. Tatsukas looked at Zoro who was being helped up by Luffy. Zoro, I can give you a chance. Next I'll tell you why I know Luffy is here. And this opportunity will determine the life or death of you and Luffy. What do you mean, you guy? 
have you finally revealed your fox tail? Zoro looked at Shinigami angrily, this guy finally revealed his purpose. Chen Feng smiled indifferently, Luffy regards me as a partner. He can trust me with his life and back. You Zoro can't do this. And why do you think you survived after provoking me many times? It's because I'm still a member of the Straw Hats. I'm not explaining these words to you, but to Luffy who trusts me. Do you know why I said you couldn't seize this opportunity and wanted to kill you and Luffy? That's because if I kill you, Luffy will fight to the death with me. So I will kill both. After Zoro heard Chen Feng's words, he tightened his grip on the hilt of his knife. After Luffy heard this, he still had a smile on his face. Vice Captain, we will always be partners. After hearing these words, Nami thought that the green algae head in front of her was extremely stupid. How dare you provoke Shinigami? I really don't know what to think. And the stupidest thing is that this guy is no match for Shinigami. Shinigami, I accept this opportunity as you said. If you can't convince me, I will fight you tooth and nail. If you convince me, then you will always be my second in command, Zoro, and I will obey your orders. This is our partner. Don't worry, Zoro, the vice captain really won't harm us. Luffy smiled and patted Zoro's shoulder. It's better to wait for his reasonable explanation and then make a conclusion. Zoro looked directly into Chen Feng's eyes. Looking at Zoro's serious eyes, Chen Feng raised the corners of his mouth. He originally found Zoro's previous distrust of him amusing. But he soon realizes that a distrustful partner can do bad things. So it's better to let Zoro change from a distrustful partner to an obedient subordinate, otherwise wouldn't his job as vice captain be in vain. Remember that big bird that caught Luffy. That big bird was raised by a person in this town, and that big bird won't hurt anyone. So Luffy will definitely be brought here by that big bird. As for why you want to ask me why I know this, you can ask the little thief cat next to me, Nami. Let me introduce to you, this little thief cat, Nami, who will be our navigator from now on. This was a decision made jointly by the captain and I. Let me tell you one more thing, the little thief cat Nami is what I call a suitable candidate for the navigator. I think if I didn't tell you this in advance, you would think it was my design after a while. As for why I wanted the little thief cat Nami to be my navigator, do I still need to explain it to you? Although Chen Feng said he wanted to explain, he had no intention of explaining. Zoro looked directly at Nami aside. Hey, tell me if what Shinigami said is true and if that bird was raised by someone in the town. Yes, it was indeed raised by people in the town. This is something that many people know. Looking at Zoro's murderous eyes, Nami told him unconsciously. After receiving Nami's proof, Zoro put away his knife and looked at Chen Feng seriously. Sorry, Vice Captain, I misunderstood you. I will not question you again in the future, and I will obey orders. This time Zoro has completely regarded Chen Feng as the deputy captain, not because he is afraid of death, but because this explanation is very reasonable. That's for the best, Zoro. I said the first officer wouldn't hurt us. Luffy was very happy at this time, but Nami beside him was not so happy. She was still waiting for the three people to fight among themselves, and she took the opportunity to escape. Unexpectedly, there was no more internal strife. And that guy from Shinigami actually knows this place so well. Not only that, that guy also knew her very well. Then just keep using that plan. After Chen Feng glanced at Zoro, he turned to look at Nami. Zoro, Nami will be our navigator from now on, it's up to you to protect her. After hearing Chen Feng's order, Zoro nodded and turned to look at Nami aside. He already understood the meaning in Chen Feng's tone. This protection was not protection in the true sense, but also meant care. From this point of view, the woman in front of me does not really want to join the straw hats. But it seems normal that I don't want to join now. After all, the straw hats now have a Shinigami. If he hadn't promised that stupid guy Luffy before, Zoro might not have joined the straw hats. But thankfully now, Shinigami really has no intention of harming them. As for orders, as long as they don't involve principles, he will listen to Shinigami. Taking care of a stranger does not violate his principles at all. Luffy laughed after hearing Tatsukazi's words and seeing Zoro's behavior. Great, now we have a navigator. At this time, Nami was very uncomfortable. 
because she could feel the murderous green algae head staring at her. It was already difficult to deal with just one Shinigami, but now there is another green algae head staring at her at all times. As for the protection Shinigami mentioned, she knew clearly that it was just a cover. It is more of a supervision than a protection. Now it would be even harder for her to escape from the straw hats. It's all this green algae head's fault. If you say you're going to fight internally, just fight internally. If you provoke Shinigami, just keep provoking him to the end. Now it's actually like this. Not only did the internal strife fail, but I became Shinigami's little brother, and he also had to obey Shinigami's orders to watch over me. Do you have any principles? Are you sick? Or are you so afraid of death? I really look down on people like you who are afraid of death. If I wasn't afraid of death, I would have fought with Shinigami long ago. No, I'm not afraid of death. I just have unfinished stuff. As long as that thing is completed. I am Nami, still don't want to die. Well, Nami also compromised in her heart and could only slowly find another chance to escape from Shinigami's clutches. At this moment, Tatsumi suddenly turned around. This action scared Nami, who raised his legs to follow. Luffy was also a little confused, and Zoro stared at Nami. Chin Feng smiled and looked towards Buggy's headquarters. I almost forgot something. The aura on his body instantly rose to a very terrifying level. All the pirates in Buggy's base camp immediately went dark and lost consciousness. The knives and weapons on the ground split and reorganized, turning into sharp blades and piercing the chests of all pirates. After all the pirates died, Chin Feng's aura disappeared and returned to normal. He ignored the confused and shocked three people, turned around and left again, leaving behind a few words. Luffy, Zoro, Nami, I have dealt with all the pirates. You go and take all the pirates' treasures with you. I will wait for you on the boat. Zoro was the first to react, but he was extremely shocked. That's right, all the pirates there are dead, and their breath has completely disappeared. That guy from Shinigami killed all the pirates without even drawing his sword. Luffy was the second to react, but he was mumbling. But I am the captain, how can the deputy captain order the captain? At this time, Chen Feng's voice came again. Luffy, use all the money you get on the ship to buy meat. Nami, 40% of the money you find is at your discretion. What, vice captain, you are the best. Luffy roared excitedly and rushed in first. Nami was the second to rush in. Although she was extremely frightened by Shinigami's killing behavior just now, she truly believed Shinigami said he would kill all the pirates, and there was no way Shinigami could lie to her. But that 40% temptation succeeded in making Nami overcome all her fears. That's 40%. If Shinigami is absolutely true, the more treasures found, the better. You two guys are really. Zoro looked at the figures running faster than the other, feeling very helpless. But the next second, Zoro also walked inside. There was no way, he also needed to follow orders to find the treasure, and he also had to keep an eye on the newly joined navigator. At this time, Chen Feng was about to leave the base camp of Buggy the Clown. It was enough to give the three of them the treasure inside. What needs to be done next is to continue towards the Grand Line. Now that the navigator has been found, the journey will be much smoother. At the same time, an old man with white hair and beard ran towards this place. Straw Hat Boy, where are you? I want to duel with you. Straw Hat Boy, come out, I know you are in there. Three seconds later, the old man appeared in front of Chen Feng and stopped instantly. Mr. Mayor, do you have anything to do with Luffy? Chen Feng asked with a smile. Shinigami, why are you here? Why do you know that Straw Hat Boy too? Get out of the way. Don't block me, I want to duel with that straw hat boy. The white-haired old man in front of him was very angry, as if he had some deep grudge against straw hat Luffy. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, Luffy is my captain now. If you want to challenge him for a duel, I can do it for you. Chen Feng's tone was very frivolous, and he was joking about the old man in front of him. What, that straw hat boy is actually your captain? Aren't you a bounty hunter? Shinigami. Why have you changed your career to become a pirate now? The white-haired old man was very shocked. This guy in front of him was a Shinigami. How could he become a pirate? This guy has probably killed more pirates than anyone he has ever seen. You know, he is an old man who has lived for decades. 
The white-haired old man's face clearly showed embarrassment. He wanted to fight Luffy and wanted to die, but it didn't mean that he really wanted to die. If the guy in front of me did it for him, he would definitely die in the next second. He had dealt with this Shinigami half a year ago, and he even told Shinigami where Buggy the Clown's headquarters was. That Shinigami, I'm sorry, I don't want to duel with the hairy boy now. The white-haired old man said while stepping back. Chen Feng looked at the white hair retreating, and the old man nodded. Okay, see you later, Mr. Mayor. Well, Shinigami, we are destined to meet again. The white-haired old man disappeared before he finished speaking. Chen Feng continued to walk towards the boat on the shore. Half an hour later, Luffy and Nami were both satisfied with their treasures. Zoro followed behind them holding a large pile of treasures. A lot of meat, these treasures can buy a lot of meat. Luffy's face was filled with a smile. The money was enough for him to buy a lot of meat. What a silly brat, and this is just the captain. I think the captain is obviously Shinigami. Nami looked at Luffy who was smiling with disdain. But soon, an obsessed smile appeared on her face. 40%, 40%, that's a lot of money. I can't make that much money in a year. Zoro looked at the two people in front of him who were fascinated by the treasure and felt even more speechless. It's just treasure. Is there such a big reaction? How can treasure be as important as swordsmanship? Just as the three of them were carrying the treasure towards the ship, suddenly, three figures blocked their way. Nami suddenly woke up after seeing these three people. Aren't these the three stupid pirates she had deceived before? You can't run away now, can you? We said the mountains and rivers are easy to meet. Hand over all the money you have, or we will kill you. Hey, what do you three do? Don't block our way, okay. Luffy looked at the three guys blocking the road with dissatisfaction. If he didn't have his own flesh in his hands, he would have beaten these three guys away long ago. A look of horror appeared on Nami's face. These three guys are pirates. And they were deceived by me. What should we do now? You'd better hand over the treasures you have in your hands honestly, otherwise. Before the three pirates had finished speaking, three sword energies had already cut off their heads. At the same time, Chen Feng's voice sounded in the ears of the three of them. You three, hurry up, don't waste time. Chen Feng removed his hand from the handle of the knife and looked at Luffy and the others calmly. Oh, we'll be right back, Vice Captain. Luffy ignored the three pirate corpses in front of him and ran towards the ship. Zoro, on the other hand, walked directly around Nami who was stunned. When he passed by Nami, he said something. Navigator, don't be in a daze, hurry up and move the treasure up, otherwise you know what the consequences will be. Zoro's words directly woke up Nami who was immersed in fear. Yes, that guy is a Shinigami, isn't it normal to do this kind of thing? Seeing the three pirates dying in front of him, Nami decided to study his escape strategy. If they were discovered or if they escaped too close, the fate of these three pirates might be hers. You two wait for me, I'm a girl. Nami yelled and ran after him. Girl, Luffy turned his head in confusion. He didn't seem to realize that Nami was a girl. Luffy turned around quickly and was directly overtaken by Nami. When she walked past Luffy, she was even more speechless at the idiotic captain in front of her. This guy is really silly, innocent, and cute. Although Nami thinks Straw Hat is very simple and easy to deceive, she still likes this kind of simple and easy to deceive guy. If you have to ask why Nami likes such a simple and easy to deceive guy, there is only one reason, and that is because he is simple and easy to deceive. At this moment, Zoro also surpassed Luffy. Hey, how come you passed the captain and walked to the front? How can you get in front of the captain? Luffy was very dissatisfied and ran towards the front, wanting to get to the front. Three minutes later, Chen Feng looked at the three people in front of him. Luffy's face was filled with an innocent smile. A flattering smile appeared on Nami's face. Zoro's face was very calm. Chen Feng looked at Luffy. Luffy, you did a good job. I'll take you to buy some meat later. Ha ha, great, thank you, Deputy Captain. Chen Feng nodded and looked at Nami. Miss Navigator, I'm here, Vice Captain Shinigami. Do you have any orders? Chen Feng shook his head. I don't have any instructions for the time being, but I hope you will only take 40% of what you deserve. Otherwise, you won't be able to take away a penny. The flattery on Nami's face instantly turned into horror and confusion. 
Shinigami, how did that guy know that she had something to hide? It's impossible, no one can find out. But Nami was still serious and nodded. Don't worry, Vice Captain Shinigami, I won't do it. Although she still couldn't figure out why Shinigami knew, she didn't dare to gamble. Of course Chen Feng didn't know where Nami hid the treasure. But he knew Nami's character very well. When this woman didn't completely regard the pirate group as belonging, she couldn't trust her in terms of money or other aspects. And if he considers the pirates to belong, she will be the best navigator and housekeeper. Chen Feng no longer paid attention to Nami. After glancing at Zoro, he spoke again. Next, Zoro put down some of your treasures, Luffy takes all your treasures, and we go buy meat. Nami, take out the third layer of your treasure and come with us to buy other supplies. Understood, Vice Captain. Luffy and the other three responded in unison. So Chen Feng took the three of them and started buying supplies. He had been to this town once, so he knew the town fairly well, and he probably knew where the best place to buy supplies was. Of course, Nami is actually very clear about this. But Chen Feng would not let Nami bring those two items to buy supplies. Luffy is a simple kid who is easy to deceive, and Zoro is a complete fool. The two of them are absolutely no match for Nami and will be manipulated. But Nami didn't dare to play these little tricks in front of Chen Feng. Moreover, Chen Feng used to buy supplies by himself, which was quite a habit. In the future, when Nami completely returns to her heart, she won't have to let Chen Feng buy it himself. But buying supplies now is quite fun. You can also compete with the woman in front of you who has a small mind. In fact, it's not really a battle of wits and courage. After all, the woman in front of her was very afraid of death and didn't dare to use any tricks. He obviously had many tricks, but he didn't dare to use them for fear of being directly hacked to death. Isn't it very interesting to see this kind of scene and meet such people? Sure enough, following the straw hats, things will become very interesting. Half an hour later, they bought the supplies and returned to the ship. At this time, Luffy was eating meat like crazy and couldn't speak at all. Zoro was sitting cross-legged and meditating. Nami's eyes kept looking at the ship, and many thoughts came to her mind. At this moment, Chen Feng opened his mouth and said, Nami, we are going to the Grand Line, and then to the New World. I'll leave the navigation to you. Do it well, I won't treat you badly. Yes, Vice Captain, Nami seems to have entered the state at this time. Now she seems to be the navigator of the Straw Hat Pirates. Although she has countless ideas in her mind, she currently has no way to implement any of them, so she has to become a navigator for the time being. Chen Feng looked at Nami who was looking around and stopped paying attention. He once again lay in his rocking chair and began to enjoy the good life. Five minutes later, Nami came to Chen Feng. Vice Captain Shinigami, it seems your ship hasn't been repaired for a long time, right? The place at the helm must not have been used for a long time. Chen Feng opened his eyelids and looked at the navigator in front of him. Well, you are right. It has not been repaired. If I am at the helm, it will always sail automatically. After hearing Chen Feng's answer, Nami had helplessness on her face. Although she doesn't care about these people's safety, she does care about her own safety. She didn't really want to sit on this kind of boat, and she still had to be concerned about her own life and safety. She is going to apply to Shinigami to repair the ship. Vice Captain Shinigami, I. Nami was interrupted by a loud voice. Shinigami, Straw Hat, are you there? I have something to do with you, please come out. Nami clenched her fists and turned around dissatisfied. She wanted to see who was interrupting her speech. Chen Feng stood up and walked to the bow of the ship. He already knew who was speaking. Nami also followed and looked at the old man who appeared in front of him unhappily. Yes, the owner of this huge voice is the mayor. Mr. Mayor, what do you want from us? Chen Feng was a little confused. Does this old man still want to die? If that's the case, then let him do it. Although Nami wanted to scold the old man in front of her very much, she did not dare to make a mistake in front of Shinigami. The mayor's face was full of smiles and joy. It's nothing, I just want to thank you. Thank you very much for destroying all the pirates. On behalf of all our townspeople, I come to thank you and give you gifts. Chen Feng nodded slightly, it seemed that this old man was not here to seek death. 
Then what gifts you plan to give can be sent directly to the ship, and we won't pick them up. After receiving Chen Feng's straightforward answer, the mayor spoke again. We plan to give you 20 million baileys. Although it is not as good as the entire bounty of these pirates, we have other gifts to supplement you. We have prepared a lot for you. The specialties in our town should be enough for you to eat for two or three months. Nami's eyes lit up after hearing the 20 million belly. Luffy's eyes lit up when he heard about two or three months of food. Chen Feng waved his hand. Send over your specialties. As for the 20 million baileys, we won't need them. We navigators just said that our ship needs repairs. You can find the 10 best shipwrights here to help us repair the ship. As for the 20 million baileys, just pay 10 times the salary for repairing the ship. You can take care of the rest yourself. After hearing this, the mayor nodded immediately. Don't worry, Shinigami, we will definitely fulfill your request immediately. Afterwards, Chen Feng turned around and returned to his rocking chair, no longer paying attention to these things. Nami's eyes lost light after hearing that Shinigami didn't want the 20 million baileys. The light in Luffy's eyes was still bright. That was two or three months worth of food, which should be enough for him to eat for half a month. Nami was very angry looking at Luffy who was smiling. Straw Hat, are you the captain? Shinigami, that guy refused 20 million belly. Does he alone make all the decisions on your ship? Nami plans to use her own tactics to divide the ship's crew. Only in this way can she have a chance to escape the clutches of the Shinigami. Luffy turned to look at Nami in confusion. Is 20 million baileys a lot? I don't think it's much. The vice captain has 300 million baileys. And the vice captain left all the most important food, but it can last for half a month, half a month. Nami simply ignored Luffy's next sentence. Does that Shinigami actually have 300 million belly? That's 300 million belly. How long does it take for her to make money and how many people do she need to deceive to get that much money? At this time, Luffy said to Nami seriously. Nami, now you are also a navigator on our ship, our money is also your money, and we are pirates, don't value money so much. Only the food matters. When Nami heard Luffy's previous words, she was still very excited, but when she heard the next words, she was very helpless. Sure enough, the foolish captain in front of him only had food on his mind. But at this time, he had other thoughts in his mind. She is the navigator of this ship, so can she spend the money? That would be great. At this time, Zoro's mocking voice sounded. Miss Navigator, does it only make you so excited for only 300 million baileys? Don't forget, our deputy captain is Shinigami. His bounty for killing a pirate can be tens of millions, or even hundreds of millions. Making money is very easy for him, and of course killing pirates is also very easy. What do you think, Miss Navigator? With Zoro's reminder, Nami suddenly wakes up. Yes, that guy is Shinigami. What kind of dream are you doing now? You should first think about how to escape from the clutches of the devil. One day later, Chen Feng and others set sail again. Their pirate ship has been repaired and looks brand new. And with 10 times the salary, the pirate ship has been completely upgraded. There are two more main guns on the bow of the ship, now there are three in total. The power system has also been fully supplemented. Even all the facilities on the ship have been renovated and many functions have been added. Chen Feng was very satisfied when he saw the boat that Shin had repaired. Money can make a fool of himself, and the 10 times salary was indeed not in vain. Even Nami couldn't put it down after seeing the ship. As a navigator, having such a ship to drive is also a very happy thing. The moment Nami set sail, she was already shaken. She couldn't help thinking, what if she really became a navigator on this ship? Wouldn't that be a very happy thing? But soon, Nami woke up again. How could she sink into this place? She, Nami, has to go back to save her village and save her. So she has to escape Shinigami's clutches after all. But this had nothing to do with her enjoyment of the ship. Before returning to his hometown, it would be good to be a navigator on this ship. That's right, our Nami was also defeated by Mocha's law. Nami, when can we get to the next island? It's so boring on the boat. Luffy's face drooped, feeling weak. Nami turned around. There are about two hours left, it's already very fast. Two hours, then I'll wait. Luffy simply lay on his back on the boat. 
Chen Fang opened his eyes and looked at the sea in the distance. If nothing else, we will go to the island next, and then the Straw Hats will have one more member. He, the deputy captain, will have one more person under his command, which is pretty good when you think about it. Two hours passed quickly, and the Fatian Meili had arrived at the shore of the island. Luffy jumped directly onto the island and looked at his feet. It feels more comfortable to have your feet on the ground. Nami and Zoro also arrived on the shore one after another. Chen Feng was the last to get off the boat. Just when Luffy and others were about to move towards the depths of the island, Tatsukas looked up in a direction and there was someone there. Be careful, there seems to be someone here. Zoro's sword was already out of its sheath, and he looked wary. At this time, Luffy was suddenly attacked, and he began to dodge continuously. At the same time, some pirate flags suddenly appeared in the woods on the mountain wall. It's amazing. Are there actually pirates in this place? It's so interesting. Luffy looked at these pirate flags with shock on his face. Looks like he's coming with bad intentions. Zoro put his hand on the hilt of his sword, ready to fight at any time. Nami immediately ran to hide behind Chen Feng. She naturally wanted to hide behind the strongest person. When Chen Feng saw this situation, of course he knew what was happening and started to wait and see. At this time, a person appeared on the mountain wall directly in front, and his voice sounded. I am Usopp, the leader of the great pirate group that has come to this village. People praise me very much and call me, our captain, Usopp. Chen Feng and the other four looked at the person speaking in front of them. The most obvious feature of this person was his long nose. Hey, you are Jesus Boo's son, right? Luffy shouted happily. After hearing Luffy's words, Usopp above him was stunned for a moment. Why do you know my dad's name? My dad's name is indeed Jesus B.U. Luffy immediately explained that he had seen Jesus B.U. when he was a child. What, are you telling the truth? Usopp said in disbelief. But after some explanation, he still understood what was happening. So that's it. You met my dad when you were a child, so you are also a pirate now. That's really cool. Let's go, I'll take you to our village. Usopp warmly invited Luffy and his party. Is that so? That's great. Let's go as guests together, everyone. Luffy jumped up happily. By the way, you haven't introduced your crew to me yet. I heard you said you were the captain, right? Usopp said with a smile. Oh, I forgot about this. So Luffy immediately started introducing his crew. This is the swordsman on our ship. His name is Zoro, and he is a pirate hunter. Usopp looked towards Zoro in the direction Luffy pointed. Hello, Zoro, I didn't expect you to be a pirate hunter. Usopp was still very surprised that a pirate hunter actually joined the pirate group. This is our navigator, Nami. Ah, she is a beautiful lady. Hello, beautiful lady, my name is Usopp. As I said before, I am also the captain of a large pirate group. After hearing Usopp's words, Nami forced a smile on her face. She had never heard of a pirate captain named Usopp. Obviously, what the guy in front of her said was untrustworthy. Finally, let me introduce you to our vice captain. He is also a pirate hunter, but others usually call him Shinigami. The vice captain is still very famous. He is also a pirate hunter. His name is actually Shinigami. He has the same name as that pirate hunter. Luffy, you are really. Usopp's original smile slowly faded and turned into panic. What Luffy, are you kidding me, he's Shinigami, is that pirate hunter, Shinigami? Yes, that's the Shinigami, you heard it right. Luffy patted Usopp's shoulder with pride. It seems that our vice captain is indeed very famous. Even Usopp knows him. Are you kidding, Shinigami, is there anyone who doesn't recognize him? He is the most powerful pirate hunter in the world. No pirate can survive in his hands. Usopp couldn't believe it in his heart. Who is this straw hat boy in front of him? He can actually let the pirate hunter Shinigami be his crew member. Oh, no, it's the deputy captain. But that's not right. How could a pirate hunter become a pirate? Aren't pirate hunters supposed to kill pirates? Wait, pirate hunter. Did he just say that he is the captain of the great pirate group? Then he, will he, thinking of this, Usopp immediately bowed to Chen Feng very respectfully. I'm sorry. Shinigami-sama, I was bragging just now. I'm used to bragging. Actually, I'm not the captain of a big pirate group, I'm just a liar who loves to lie. 
Everyone keeps calling me bragging Usopp, talking Usopp. Please Shinigami-sama, don't misunderstand me, and don't kill me. Usopp's head lowered as he spoke, almost to the ground. After seeing this situation, Chen Feng nodded. Don't worry, I won't kill you. After all, you don't have any bounty and you're not a pirate. After hearing Chen Feng's words, Usopp lowered his head. Does Shinigami mean that if he is a pirate, he will die? Yes, that's right, that's definitely the case. Usopp, let's go to the village. Aren't you going to take us to try the village's specialties? I can't wait. Luffy urged, pulling Usopp away. Usopp, who was pulled away, turned to look at Chen Feng. Um, Shinigami-sama, I'm sorry, we may not have received you well here, please forgive me. Usopp had already said all the honorifics and nice words in his mind. He really didn't want to die. Nami looked at the man in front of her with contempt. Another guy who was scared to death by Shinigami. What a shame. After spending this time together, Nami's fear of Chen Feng has decreased a lot. Because she knew in her heart that as long as she didn't want to run, she should be fine. Although the fear of Shinigami was still very strong in her heart, she still despised the man in front of her. Don't worry, I really won't kill you. A smile appeared on Chen Feng's face. The smile on his face not only did not reassure Usopp, but made him even more frightened. That's the smile called Shinigami's smile. It's really scary. Usopp felt like he was dead. Suddenly, three children stood in front of Luffy and others. They held slingshots in their hands and pointed them at Chen Feng and others. Captain Usopp, were you caught by them? Don't worry, Captain Usopp we will definitely rescue you. That's right, just wait for us to save you. After Usopp heard these words, he woke up instantly. No, he is not dead, but if he doesn't speak, those three little brats might die. He hurriedly explained to Chen Feng. I'm sorry, Shinigami-sama, these three children are joking. They are not pirates, they are just children in the village. Don't mind, I will drive them away immediately. Usopp came to the three children and pushed them away. You three, stop making trouble. That man over there is Shinigami, that pirate hunter Shinigami. If you make trouble again, your lives will be in danger. What, that guy is Shinigami? Usopp covered the child's mouth. Don't be so loud, just know it, don't make Shinigami-sama angry. At this time, Zoro on the side turned to look at Chen Feng with a smile. Deputy leader, I didn't expect your reputation to be so effective. Even children know about you. But what everyone doesn't know is, since the name Shinigami came out of nowhere six months ago, some parents have used Shinigami to scare them when educating their children. Said that if they disobey, Shinigami will come and harvest their lives. Chen Feng ignored Zoro, he walked forward and said in a casual tone. This reputation is still very useful. At least it can avoid some unnecessary troubles. Indeed, after Shinigami's reputation spread, many unnecessary troubles disappeared. The three children also left obediently, not daring to say a word at all. Ten minutes later, everyone arrived in the village. Usopp began to entertain them with specialties and food from the village. While Luffy was eating, he extended an invitation to Usopp. Usopp, why don't you join our pirate group? Our pirate group still lacks a sniper. Luffy knows Usopp's affairs very well because of Usopp's father, so he hopes that Usopp can join the pirate group. Okay, of course I can join. But after saying this, Usopp regretted it. Usopp really wants to go to sea, like his father. But he can't now because he still has worries in his heart. With that girl here, he can't go to sea yet. Sorry, Luffy, I was impulsive just now. I can't join your pirate group yet, and I can't go to sea yet. Usopp looked at Luffy apologetically. Why, Usopp, didn't you agree just now? Why do you suddenly not want to go to sea? Luffy also had a very confused look on his face. Sorry, I can't tell you the reason yet. Usopp turned his head and looked in one direction. At this time, the sound of Chen Feng sounded. Luffy, if Usopp doesn't want to join us, there's no need to force him. By the way, I just saw a big villa on the mountain. The villa is very beautiful. Do you want to go and take a look? No, absolutely can't go there to see it. Usopp turned to look at Chen Feng and blurted out the words instantly. Oh, you can't go. Is it some kind of private place there? Chen Feng looked at Usopp with a smile. Well, 
that's not the case, Shinigami-sama, that place is just not convenient to go to, it doesn't mean that you can't go there. Usopp suddenly broke into a cold sweat. How dare he yell at Shinigami? Didn't he want to live? What is there in that place? Wouldn't it be interesting, Usopp? Luffy also had a look of interest on his face. That place, is actually nothing. Usopp replied hesitantly. Since it's not a place we can't go to, why don't we just go and see it? If we go see it in person, won't we know what's going on right away? After Zoro said this, he picked up the knife next to him and stood up. That's right, let's go and see for ourselves. Luffy stood up and walked directly to the door. Um, wait, we can't go. Usopp tried to stop Luffy and others again. But nothing worked, no one listened to him. Chen Feng had a smile on his face and walked towards the door. Nami glanced at Usopp strangely and followed Chen Feng. Chen Feng looked at Luffy running ahead. He is very clear about Luffy's character. Since he wants Usopp to join the pirate group, he will insist on it. Usopp will become more interesting after joining the Straw Hats. After all, although this guy is usually not very good, he is someone who can come back from adversity. Since he had no idea of killing Luffy yet, he had no choice but to speed up the process. Just go into that villa and kill the pirate there and that's it. Wait, if you think about it this way, you still have to kill all the pirates. So I still have to give that guy a chance to gather the pirate group. Therefore, his identity cannot be exposed for the time being and needs to be planned. Sure enough, things got interesting. Ten minutes later, everyone arrived in front of the villa. Luffy walked right up and started knocking on the door. Hey, is anyone there? Come and open the door. We want to go in and have a look. Usopp rushed in front of Luffy and stopped him from ringing the doorbell. Luffy, what are you doing? You can't ring the doorbell like that, it's too noisy. Ah, why can't it be like this? If we don't ring the doorbell, how will they know we are coming? Luffy looked at Usopp in confusion. Usopp hesitated for a long time but still couldn't come up with any reasonable explanation. But he finally said firmly. Anyway, you just can't ring the doorbell so loudly. Soon, a man in a black suit appeared, and he saw Usopp at a glance. Usopp, didn't I say it? It's impossible for Miss Kaya to see you, please leave. Otherwise, I will leave quickly. After seeing the man in the suit, Usopp immediately lowered his head. I understand, I will leave right away, and I will take them away as well. Then please leave as soon as possible. The man in the suit glanced casually and then walked in. Usopp turned to look at Chen Feng and others. Everyone, let's get out of here first, please. Chapter 11 Seeing the pleading expression on Usopp's face, Luffy patted Usopp's shoulder. Okay, let's leave first. Luffy turned around and walked down. Chen Feng also turned around and left with a smile on his face, something interesting was going to happen soon. Zoro glanced at Usopp and followed Chen Feng. Nami glanced at Usopp strangely. This guy looked quite pitiful, but she shook her head and followed Chen Feng and the others. After Usopp saw everyone leaving, he turned his head and glanced at the villa. The expression on his face was a bit strange, with sadness and perseverance. He clenched his fists and chased Luffy Chen Feng and the others. After seeing everyone following him, Chen Feng turned to look at the people behind him. I just discovered something interesting. What an interesting thing, what an interesting thing, Vice Captain. Luffy was obviously very interested in this interesting thing. Zoro looked at Chen Feng strangely. He didn't know what Chen Feng wanted to say, but what happened before made him learn to shut up. Nami and Usopp looked at Chen Feng in confusion. Chen Feng didn't show off and said directly. The man in the suit just now is a pirate, but the bounty is not high. I originally regarded him as a target, but then I stopped watching him. You're lying, that guy is a pirate, he doesn't look like him at all. Luffy's eyes widened in shock, and his mouth almost dropped to the floor. Zoro was also shocked, this is what Shinigami was going to say. Although there is shock on Nami's face, she is still very receptive in this regard. Because after meeting Shinigami, she felt that she would not be shocked when meeting other people. Of course, the most difficult thing to accept is Usopp. What, you said Mr. Butler is a pirate? Impossible, this is absolutely impossible. How could Mr. Butler be a pirate? You must be lying, right? You must be lying to me, right? 
Yes, that's right, you must be lying to me. Usopp shook his head while confirming his thoughts. In the end, he even stared directly at Chen Feng because he didn't believe it at all. But after seeing Chen Feng's half-smiling eyes, Usopp was sweating again. What did he just do? He was yelling at Shinigami, how dare he? I'm sorry, Shinigami-sama, it's not that I don't believe what you said, but what you said is really unbelievable. Usopp apologized quickly. How could Mr. Butler be a pirate? This must be a lie, right? You must have made a mistake, right? Shinigami-sama. Usopp still didn't want to believe this, he would rather believe that Chen Feng had remembered it wrong. But at this time, Chen Feng's nightmare-like words sounded again. Don't worry, Usopp, I won't admit my mistake, and the amount of the bounty I placed on that guy is still fresh in my mind. That guy was active at sea before, but then suddenly disappeared. At this time, Zoro also spoke. Hey, long nose, our vice captain won't lie to you. You are not worthy of Shinigami lying to you. If that guy is a pirate, everyone in that villa may be in danger. After all, not all pirates are like the straw hat boy in front of you. Pirates are not good people. At this time, Nami looked at Zoro with an unhappy expression. Although she is also a pirate, aren't you Zoro too now? Why are you still scolding yourself? Even if you scold yourself, why are you scolding me? And has this guy forgotten that the people in front of him seem to be basically all pirates? At this time, Chen Feng added to his anger with a calm tone. Zoro is right, there are basically no good people among pirates. Of course, I'm not a good person, but I shouldn't be interested in other people's property like that guy. Usopp immediately hugged his head, his face very frightened and tangled. Stop talking, stop talking, it can't be like this, it will never be like this. Usopp kept repeating the same words. Obviously, he can't accept this fact now. Suddenly, Usopp exploded. He roared and ran towards the village down the mountain. That Usopp guy, are you okay? Luffy looked at Usopp's back with some confusion and worry. That guy just can't accept the facts. Just wait until he thinks about it. Zoro said calmly. Chen Feng smiled and said nothing. Nami glanced at Chen Feng and said with a sarcastic tone. Isn't that guy a bully and a liar? Now that I hear the truth, I can't stand it at all. Sure enough, it's hard for people who have been living with lies all their lives to believe the truth. Then we really don't care about Usopp. Luffy took off his straw hat and scratched his head. Nami glanced at Chen Feng again. After seeing that Chen Feng didn't care at all, she continued. Don't worry about him, just let him stay by himself for a few more minutes. At this time, Chen Feng's voice sounded. Let's just wait here for a while. The guy will come to your door soon. After all, he cares about this villa very much. After saying these words, Chen Feng looked down the mountain with a smile. It seems to be true. That guy doesn't allow us to get close to this villa. Zoro agreed. Okay, then let's wait for him here. Luffy finally concluded. Half an hour later, Usopp, whose expression became determined, came to Chen Feng. Sir Shinigami, I believe what you say. Please help me, I must defeat that bad pirate. After saying this, Usopp knelt down directly. Looking at Usopp kneeling down, Chen Feng turned to look at Zoro and Luffy. Luffy, Zoro, I'll leave this matter to you. I can't step in for the time being. You can solve it, right? Hey, we do have no problem, but why? Deputy Captain. Luffy was very confused. Zoro also looked at Chen Feng in confusion. He didn't understand why Shinigami was unwilling to help, even though it was just a simple matter. Did Shinigami find it too unchallenging? Nami looked at Usopp who was kneeling with some disdain and said to himself. Shinigami, how could you help me just because you just asked me? You are so naive. But then, Chen Feng's answer exceeded their expectations. That guy is the leader of a pirate group. If you want to completely resolve this matter, you have to ask that guy to bring the pirate group over. Finally, the final thing that needs to be done is to deal with the entire pirate group. If I kill him now, it will be very troublesome to find the pirate group, so I will leave the next thing to you, can you understand? Is that so? It's indeed Shinigami. Although Nami was shocked, he quickly accepted it. Don't worry, Vice Captain, we won't have any problems. Zoro smiled and put his hand on the handle of the knife. 
Usopp raised his head and understood what Shinigami meant. It's not that Shinigami doesn't want to help him, but he wants to completely help him solve this problem. So he became even more grateful to Shinigami. Is that so, Shinigami-sama? So what should we do next? Yes, Vice Captain, please tell me what we should do. Nami asked flatteringly. How about we just go in and beat that guy away? Luffy directly proposed a solution. Nami turned her head and rolled her eyes at Luffy. If it was really that simple, wouldn't it be better if the deputy captain chopped that guy to death with a knife? Then what should we do, Vice Captain? Luffy looked at Chen Fang. The rest of the people also looked at Chen Fang. Three minutes later, Luffy and others nodded. We'll do it right away. We must try to get rid of that bad pirate as soon as possible. Usopp glanced at Luffy and Zoro. Several people looked at each other and ran away, preparing to do their own work. Chen Feng walked towards the other side, looking for a place to watch a show. Half an hour later, everyone gathered at the door of the villa again. There was a wanted notice in Usopp's hand. The man on the wanted notice was very similar to the suit butler. At this moment, Usopp knocked on the door. Mr. Butler, I have something very important to ask you. The butler's voice soon sounded. Usopp, didn't I tell you not to come to Miss Kaya again? Miss Kaya won't see you, so just give up. The butler in a suit came out and looked at Usopp. Since you don't listen to the warning, then I have no choice but to use force. Someone, get this guy away. At this time, a wanted notice appeared in Usopp's hand. Mr. Butler, I have a question. Do you have a brother who looks like you? Are you kidding, Usopp, I don't have such a thing as a brother. The man in the suit was very angry. Why are you still standing there? Drive that guy away. The other two men in suits beside him nodded and rushed towards Usopp. But at this time, Usopp was not afraid at all. A wanted notice appeared in his hand. Since you don't have a brother, Mr. Butler, then you are the one on this wanted notice, right? So you are actually a pirate, right? Mr. Butler. You guys, are you kidding me? What evidence do you have? Just based on a wanted poster that looks like me. The man in the suit was very disdainful. Although he said he didn't believe it at all, when he saw the portrait on the wanted poster, the corners of his eyes still twitched. Mr. Butler, I don't want to hear your explanation or other words. If you have anything to say, please tell this group of pirate hunters. After Usopp finished speaking, Zoro stood up, and Luffy also stood up. The man in the suit looked at the two people who suddenly appeared in front of him, with a smile on his face. Pirate hunter, Usopp, are you kidding? Aren't these two guys the same people you just brought? How could they be pirate hunters? Your lies are really getting better and better. Why are you no longer satisfied with just talking big words? You also need to find someone to cooperate with you in performing, right? Just then, Zoro pulled out his knife and pointed it at the man in the suit. We are real pirate hunters. My name is Roronoa Zoro. This person on the right is my brother, Johnny. We also know your true identity. You are Captain Crow of the Black Cat Pirates. Are we right? The man in the suit had a sharp look in his eyes, and his expression suddenly changed. How could these guys know that he was Captain Crow? No way, they couldn't know. He has obviously not appeared at sea for a long time, and this group of people cannot know. However, he had heard the name Rorano Azoro, a pirate hunter, before, and it quite matched the name of the man in front of him. Could it really be that guy? Even if it is, it actually doesn't matter, don't worry about it at all, because no one will believe Usopp's words. At this time, the man in the suit discovered something strange. That was the two men in suits just now. Instead of driving Usopp away, they even targeted him. A wanted poster also appeared on their hands, and that guy Usopp was standing in front of them. Hey, you two, take a good look at it, Mr. Butler, but for those who say he has no brothers, this wanted notice is definitely true. It's true that you don't believe me, Usopp, but don't you still believe Marine? This is stamped with the seal of the Marine government. The two men in suits looked at each other. Yes, this pass did have the seal of the Marine government. So, that explains. The two men in suits turned to look at the housekeeper, and one of the men in suits spoke. Mr. Butler, I think you'd better give us an explanation. Explanation, what explanation do you want? Don't you know that Usopp is a liar? Can you believe what he says? 
The butler's tone was very angry, as if he had really been wrong. But Marine's seal is infallible, and you also said that you really don't have any brothers. So Mr. Butler, you'd better give us a reasonable explanation. The butler looked at the two men in suits and Usopp in front of him with a stern expression. He really didn't understand why that guy Usopp had Marine's wanted notice. Hasn't he been anonymous for a long time? Marine should have thought he was dead and probably didn't know he existed. Where did it go wrong? No, he couldn't admit it. Once you admit it, you will not be able to inherit this huge family property. Mr. Butler, are you speechless? Does this mean you admit that you are a pirate? If you are really a pirate, then these pirate hunters will attack you. After Usopp said these words, he immediately stepped away, and Zoro and Luffy immediately stood up. Can we finally fight that guy off? I'm very impatient to wait. Luffy was moving his hands and feet. Yes, that's right, you can indeed take action. Let's give that guy some color. Zoro also pulled out three knives. After the housekeeper saw this formation, he immediately yelled. Hey, what do you want to do? I am not a pirate, and this is not a place for you to run wild. The battle next to the villa is about to break out. Chen Feng watched with interest from a big tree. At this time, Nami also walked out. Mr. Captain Crow, you'd better use your true skills, otherwise, you will be hacked to death by these two pirate hunters. After hearing this, the housekeeper clenched his fists instantly. This woman really went too far, which put him in a dilemma. If he resists, he will prove his identity as a pirate. And if he didn't resist, these two guys would definitely kill him before. Yes, this is a simple conspiracy. Chen Feng didn't even think about trying to expose the conspiracy or anything complicated. Just put a wanted warrant on his head, label him a pirate, and then beat him directly. Of course, the wanted poster was drawn by Nami. With Nami's ability, this is a very simple thing. Zoro rushed forward without saying a word, he didn't want to waste time. The butler instantly dodged the attack, and Zoro slashed it to the ground. It seems that you are indeed a pirate, Mr. Butler. Otherwise, there is no way to explain why you, a butler, can avoid the attacks of pirate hunters. Usopp's voice rang in the butler's ears again. Usopp, do you want to die? The butler looked at Usopp with a fierce look, and a weapon instantly appeared in his hand. And that weapon is Captain Crow's iconic weapon, exactly the same as the one on the wanted poster. When this weapon appears, everyone can be sure that he is the real Captain Crow. You guys actually let all my years of planning go to waste. I'm going to kill you. The butler angrily rushed towards Zoro and Luffy. The three began to fight. Usopp hid in the distance and began to use slingshots to support. Chen Feng looked at the seemingly evenly matched battle below and felt a little bored, so he put his hand on the handle of the knife. In an instant, the weapon in the butler's hand was completely severed. After losing his weapon, Zoro's sword drove straight in and slashed open the butler's chest. Luffy's fist also hit the butler directly on the head, knocking him away. The housekeeper who was knocked away rolled twice on the ground and rolled down the hillside. After Zoro saw this situation, he put away his knife and stood up. You should be able to do this, right? Vice Captain. Chen Feng's figure also appeared in the yard, and his plain voice sounded. That's enough. All that's left to do next is to wait. Hey, it's so boring, Vice Captain, why did you take action anyway? Luffy looked at Chen Feng with some complaints. Actually, it's nothing, it's just a bit boring to watch. Wouldn't it be better to finish the fight early and go back to eat meat? What do you think, Luffy? Chen Feng's words directly affected Luffy. Yes, eat meat, I want to go back and eat meat. Luffy completely forgot about what happened just now, and now he was only thinking about eating meat. Nami saw this scene and was able to accept it. At this time, the butler, Captain Crow, had just climbed up from the hillside. He threw away the broken weapon in his hand and clenched his hands. I will not give up. These huge inheritances are definitely mine. As long as I kill all the people in these villages, no one will know that I did it here. In the end, Marine will also define this place as what other pirates did. Captain Crow glanced at the villa on the mountain again, turned and left. Twenty minutes later, Captain Crow came to the beach. At this time, a man wearing glasses and a bandage on his chin appeared. What's going on now? 
Why did you take the initiative to come to me? Gather the crew, I want to kill everyone in this village. Captain Crow's calm tone contained anger and murderous intent. The man wearing glasses and holding a bandage on his chin looked very surprised. Oh, what made you change your mind? You know that when we suggested this to you before, you rejected it. They are three pirate hunters. They have wanted orders in their hands, and they are my wanted orders. The man with glasses and a bandage on his chin wanted to say something else, but was directly interrupted by Captain Crow. Stop talking nonsense and gather the crew. I want to get the inheritance as quickly as possible. Of course there is no problem. I wish you had thought of it earlier. After the man said this, he left directly. Soon, three hours passed, and a huge pirate ship docked. Captain Crow looked at the pirate ship and walked up directly. He took the weapon from a man's hand. It was the same weapon he used before. After receiving the weapon, Captain Crow looked around at all the pirates. Brothers, come with me to slaughter this village, and then everyone will share the money. No problem, Captain. Okay, Captain. If there's no problem, let's go. Captain Crow headed ashore first. At this time, on the mountain wall on the shore, Chen Feng's people stood here, looking at the pirates coming towards the village below. Don't we really need to do something? For example, make some traps or something. Usopp's legs were shaking as he spoke. Trap, are you kidding me? With the vice captain here, do we still need to make a trap? Nami's tone was very mocking. Deputy commander, when can we start attacking? Luffy had asked this question three times. Chun Feng glanced below and found that all the pirates had come ashore. Let's go, we can go deal with the pirates. After Chen Feng finished speaking, he jumped towards the bottom of the mountain wall. Okay, I can finally take action. I'm going to fight them off. Luffy also excitedly jumped towards the bottom of the mountain wall. Zoro saw this and jumped down immediately. No, didn't you all walk down the mountain? Usopp couldn't stop shaking, his face was very shocked. These three people actually jumped directly. Nami glanced at Usopp and sat down directly. Nami, aren't we going to help? Although Usopp was still shaking, he still wanted to help. Help, are you kidding me? How do you think I can help in this situation? Nami didn't even look at Usopp. She took out the treasure from her body and looked at it. No, I have to help them. Usopp cheered himself up, and then walked along the mountain road toward me. At this time, Tatsukas was facing the entire pirate group, with Zoro and Luffy behind him. Where did you come out of nowhere again? Captain Crow asked doubtfully and angrily. Chen Feng didn't say anything, and the long sword was unsheathed. You guy, Captain Crow is asking you something. A pirate shouted unhappily. But after shouting these words, he found that the world was spinning and he soon lost consciousness. The sound of a head hitting the ground was heard. Captain Crow looked at the surrounding situation in shock. At this time, all his pirate crew members had fallen to the ground, and no one survived. The sounds of heads falling to the ground were heard one after another, followed by the sounds of corpses falling to the ground. Chen Feng sheathed the knife, turned around and left. Zoro, Luffy, you can continue the previous battle, I will not interfere again. It's amazing, the vice captain, he actually killed all the pirates except the butler. Luffy's face was full of shock and admiration. Zoro was also shocked by the situation in front of him. What kind of swordsmanship is this? Will that eagle-eyed man be this guy's opponent? Or who is stronger between them? Soon, Zoro's eyes became determined and he clenched the knife in his hand. No matter which one of them is stronger, I will surpass them. The three swords were unsheathed directly, and the three sword styles were ready. Zoro stared at the enemy in front of him. Captain Crow also quickly woke up. The Shinigami-like man just now did not choose to continue taking action. Wait, he suddenly thought of something. The look of that guy is unmistakable, that guy is Shinigami. The real pirate hunter, Shinigami. So these two people in front of me are also subordinates of the pirate hunter Shinigami. If it is really a pirate hunter, Shinigami, then what happened before can be explained. It was Shinigami who cut off his weapon before, so how could he lose to these two guys in front of him? Since Shinigami won't take action, then you two should wake up to me. Captain Crow rushed towards Luffy and Zoro, intending to kill these two guys. Even if he will be killed by Shinigami, he will kill the two guys in front of him who made his plan fail. 
The battle between the three began again, which was a continuation of the previous battle. Yusuf, who had just come down from the mountain road, felt cold air rising from his back. Are those heads on the ground serious? Why are there so many heads and blood on the ground? What happened during the time he went down the mountain? At this time, Chen Feng walked past Yusuf. The battle is over, go back. After Chen Feng said this, he walked towards the village. The battle is over. You're lying. Aren't Luffy and the others fighting that butler? Usopp froze in place again. But apparently no one answered Usopp's question. Usopp stamped his feet and rushed towards Luffy's position. He wanted to help them. Even if he can't do anything, he still has to help them. Nami on the mountain wall has also been petrified. She took a look because she was curious about the battle below. But she swore that the sight just now was definitely the most terrifying scene she had ever seen in her life. That man, he just gently pulled out the sword from its sheath, and all the heads of the pirates were chopped off. Sure enough, is that guy a real Shinigami? Does she really have a chance to escape from this man? There must be none, right? Half an hour later, Chen Feng opened his eyes and looked at Luffy and others in front of him. Have people been solved yet? Yes, the deputy captain has been solved. I cut off his head with my own hands. Zoro replied with a smile. Deputy captain, I'm hungry. I want to eat meat. Luffy looked at Chen Feng with a longing look on his face. Okay, let's go back and eat. After Chen Feng said this, he turned and walked towards the village. Yeah, great, you can eat meat. Luffy roared happily while running towards the village. Soon, Luffy had surpassed Chen Feng and ran to the front. At this time, Usopp still felt that everything was very unreal. Such a large pirate group was wiped out by them so quickly. That's hundreds of people. Although he had been talking big words before and said he had a fleet of 8,000 people, those were really just big words. The largest fleet he had ever seen only had a few hundred people. Yes, that's right, that's today's fleet. This large fleet of several hundred people was killed instantly. Nami glanced at Usopp and said nothing. She shouted loudly forward. Vice Captain, wait for me. After Chen Feng finished his dinner, he began to drink tea leisurely. This time, Luffy was eating meat. He had previously extended an invitation to Usopp again, hoping that Usopp would join the Straw Hats, go on adventures with them, and become a pirate. Usopp finally agreed this time. Luffy was very happy about this. So he happily ate a lot of meat again. But after agreeing, Usopp said that he needed to say goodbye to someone. So we need to leave tomorrow. Of course, Luffy readily agreed to this. After finishing his meal, Zoro walked up to Chen Feng and looked at Chen Feng. Deputy Captain, who do you think is more powerful, you or that Hawkeye? Hearing Zoro's question, Chen Feng looked up at him. I haven't tried this yet. If you have a chance, you can see if you can hack him to death. Chen Feng's tone was very calm, as if he could really kill Hawkeye. Zoro nodded in agreement, thinking that the man in front of him had a chance to do it. I have been looking for that Hawkeye before. I have always wanted to challenge the man who is known as the best swordsman in the world. I want to see how big the gap between me and him is. I heard that guy is in the East China Sea now, and I know his approximate location. After hearing these words, Chen Feng had a smile on his face and looked at Zoro with a half smile. I also know his approximate location. If I guess correctly, your goal should be to become the world's best swordsman. If I defeat him, or hack him to death, then your target should be me next. Am I right, Zoro? Yes, if you defeat him, then my ultimate goal will be to surpass you. Zoro did not hide his own thoughts at all. But then, Zoro changed the subject. But if I'm not even close to that guy, I won't set you as a target for the time being. Oh, that's it, then I wish you to grow up as soon as possible. Chen Feng stood up and walked out of the house. Nami next to her was frightened when she heard this. Is that green algae head serious? He actually wants to challenge Hawkeye, the man who is known as the world's best swordsman. What shocked him even more was that this guy actually dared to provoke Shinigami and said to his face that he would regard Shinigami as a target to surpass. Is he really not afraid of being directly hacked to death by the Shinigami? Who are the people on this pirate ship? What kind of pirate group did she join? A captain with a particularly low IQ. The vice captain is a real Shinigami again. 
There is also a life-threatening green algae head. And there is also a liar who is about to join. Is there really a future for joining this pirate group? Well, even if there is a future. But isn't this configuration too strange? Is she really going to be forced to form a pirate group with these guys and travel together? Nami still doesn't have the answer in her heart. But the answer in her heart is that he must go back to save his village and her first. With Shinigami here, even that guy shouldn't dare to break his promise. Yes, that's right, he wouldn't dare. I am now the navigator of the Straw Hats, and my vice captain is Shinigami. Nami clenched her hand, her heart filled with confidence and longing for tomorrow. Soon, night fell, and a full moon hung in the sky, shining with its brilliance. At this time, there was a creak and the door opened. A sneaky figure quietly walked out of the room. This figure looked around and found that no one was paying attention to her, then she tiptoed towards the coast. Chen Feng in the room slowly opened his eyes and raised the corners of his mouth. He already knew who had left. He was not surprised by this. Outside, the moonlight still shines on the earth. Under the illumination of the moonlight, I finally saw clearly who this sneaking figure was. She is none other than Nami. This time I must solve it as soon as possible without being discovered by them. Nami muttered quietly as he walked. Soon, Nami came to the coast and saw the big boat that she had longed for. Yes, this pirate ship belongs to Captain Crow and his friends. But after Chen Feng and the others eliminated Captain Crow and all the pirates, they did not search for the treasure inside. Of course Nami noticed this at the time, but she didn't bring it up. So she took advantage of the rest of the people to fall asleep and came to the shore alone, preparing to loot the treasure on the ship. And if she plunders it alone, the treasure on the ship will be hers and she doesn't need to share it with anyone. Beautiful treasure, here I come. Nami rushed towards the ship with a smile on her face. Ten minutes later, Nami walked out of the cabin. Her expression was very wrong, full of loss and anger. These pirates are too poor. They only have tens of thousands of belly left. Nami kicked the boat pole angrily. Suddenly Nami's expression changed. It hurts. She looked angrily at the boat pole she kicked. There's no money on the boat, but the boat pole is quite hard. I'm really pissed off. Nami glanced at the boat pole angrily and jumped off the boat. Tonight's harvest made her very unhappy. These pirates were really poor. Ten minutes later, Nami tiptoed into the room again and started to sleep. At this time, Chen Feng opened his eyes again and looked at Nami's back with a smile. He knew exactly what Nami was doing when he went out. It's nothing more than going out to search for the treasure on that ship. The reason why Chen Feng didn't let them search for treasure was because he knew that there was no treasure on the ship. If those pirates were really rich, they wouldn't be plotting against an orphan's property. As for why Nami just sneaked away to find the treasure at night instead of leaving directly, Chen Feng also knew all about this. Time flew by, and the rooster who got up on time woke up Chen Feng and others. Soon, Chen Feng and the others were ready to set sail, and at this time Usopp also ran down from the mountain. He has said goodbye to Kaya, and he may have made a promise of his own. Luffy looked at Usopp happily. Welcome to my pirate team, Usopp. Usopp also looked at Luffy with a smile. Please pay more attention to Captain Luffy next. And Vice Captain Shinigami, thank you very much for your help. He turned to look at Chen Feng. Please advise, Zoro. Please give me some advice, Nami. Chen Feng nodded. Zoro leaned on the ship's pole and looked at Usopp with a smile. With you joining me, it should be easier for me. You think so, Vice Captain? He turned to look at Chen Feng. To a certain extent, that's true. Chen Feng confirmed Zoro's statement. Nami glanced at Usopp and said helplessly to himself. Another fool was tricked into boarding the ship, and he is also a cowardly liar. What will this pirate group become? But she only said these words in her heart. In reality, she still smiled and waved. Please give me some advice, Usopp. Deputy Captain, is there anything I need to do? Usopp looked at Chen Feng, hoping he would give instructions. When he first got on the ship, he still needed to do something. This was what Usopp was thinking. Chen Feng Feng glanced at Usopp, then looked at Zoro. Zoro will be left to you to carry him first, and you will teach him what to do. No problem, Vice Captain, just leave it to me. Zoro smiled and moved his hands and looked at Usopp. Nami, 
Get ready to set sail. Chen Feng gave instructions again. Understood, Vice Captain. Nami responded loudly. Then what should I do? Deputy Captain. Luffy was very confused. He had nothing to do now. Chen Feng glanced at Luffy. Then just follow Zoro and do whatever he asks you to do. Okay, Vice Captain. Luffy agreed. After seeing this situation, Chen Feng turned around and went back to the rocking chair to lie down. Seeing this situation, Nami shook her head helplessly. Sure enough, the deputy captain has the final say on this ship. But looking at it now, no one seems to think there is anything wrong with this. Yes, that's right, she didn't think there was anything wrong. And because Shinigami, the vice captain, was here, she felt very at ease. It would be great if instead of being hostile to Shinigami, he could be Shinigami's partner. As a result, the Straw Hat Pirates once again began to march towards the Grand Line. Everything on the boat was in perfect harmony. Chin Feng was lying on the rocking chair. Zoro is teaching Usopp and Luffy how to work. After Nami fixed the direction of the boat, she began to rest and drink tea. Soon, the time came to noon. After finishing the meal, Luffy summoned all the pirate team members. Everyone was a little confused about Luffy's summons. They didn't know what Luffy wanted to do. Luffy looked at the crew members in front of him happily. Everyone, there are five of us now, and it's time for us to make a pirate flag of our own. After hearing Luffy's words, everyone suddenly realized. Yes, there are already five of them, and they should definitely get a pirate flag. So everyone began to design their own pirate flag. An hour later, the new pirate flag was designed and made. The overall pirate flag is almost the same as in the original work, but the only difference is that there is an extra Shinigami mark on the skull. That mark represents the extra crew member, their second-in-command, Shinigami. After the pirate flag was made, it was hung on the top of the pirate ship. Looking at the pirate flag fluttering in the wind, Luffy and others laughed. So everyone continued to set sail. Usopp has now adapted to the new environment on the ship. Now, like Zoro, he has completely become Chen Feng's younger brother, but he is still enjoying it. After another few days of sailing, everyone felt a little bored. They are surrounded by the sea, and the sea is endless, which makes them very uncomfortable. They miss the land very much. Nami, how long will it take to reach land? Zoro asked. Judging from the chart, it will probably take another day. Nami turned around and answered the question. Is there another day? That's okay, I can accept it. Zoro nodded to accept. Chen Feng opened his eyes and looked into the distance. There were dark clouds there, and there was a small island below. If nothing else, it is that island. That island is quite interesting, at least there will be animals that have never been seen before. After two minutes, Luffy shouted. Look, everyone, there seems to be something wrong with the weather over there. After hearing Luffy's shout, the rest of the people looked in the direction Luffy pointed. Sure enough, there were dark clouds ahead. Nami looked at the weather in that place with some doubts. She noticed that there was a small island below, so she immediately opened the chart to check. After Nami confirmed the mark on the navigation chart, she spoke in a low voice. That's right, that's it. Nami shouted, looking in that direction with a telescope. After seeing the appearance of the small island clearly, Nami's tone must be clear. Yes, that's it. That's the legendary treasure island. Nami, did you see anything interesting? Luffy asked. That's the legendary treasure island. Nami turned to look at Luffy and the others. The legendary treasure island, I've heard of it, Usopp responded. Yes, it is a very famous island in the pirate circle. Nami nodded. Let's go check out the island later, Luffy suggested. Is it the legendary treasure island? Then we should go and see it. Zoro didn't want to stay on the ship anymore. Then let's go take a look. Usopp also nodded, but this time Nami looked at Chen Feng. Soon, the other three people also looked at Chen Feng. Then let's go to the island and have a look. Yeah, great, you can go visit that legendary treasure island. Luffy jumped up with a big smile. There must be a lot of treasures on that treasure island. Nami's eyes lit up with stars. The legendary treasure island, here we come. Usopp shouted happily. So the pirate ship moved towards the small island, and after going through a lot of wind and rain, it successfully reached the shore. Luffy laughed and ran towards the top of the island. 
Chen Feng also jumped off the boat and walked upward. The animals in the pirate world are actually quite interesting, at least his world doesn't have those strange animals. As soon as he arrived on the island, he could clearly sense the existence of those animals. And those animals also realized that someone was coming to the island. Chen Feng looked up at the animals observing his group and laughed. Soon, everyone came to the woods on the island. Nami began to introduce the situation of this island to everyone. So far, many pirates have landed on this island, but they were all frightened by the weirdness of this island, so no one can take away the treasure on this island. But we can definitely take this treasure with us. Nami's tone was very confident. Her confidence comes from the Shinigami behind her. She believes that with the powerful fighting power of the Shinigami, it doesn't matter what monsters there are on the island. But the gloomy atmosphere on the island really scared Usopp, and he hugged Zoro tightly. Just when the terrifying atmosphere reached its peak, some strange red eyes appeared around everyone. What is this? Usopp was so frightened that he sat on the ground. Nami looked at those red eyes, screamed and fell to the ground. Chen Feng looked at these red eyes and unsheathed his sword instantly. Countless white sword lights chopped up all the surrounding trees, revealing the bodies of these red eyes. It was a group of very strange animals, including a rabbit as long as a snake, a combination of an ostrich and a madara horse, a combination of a chicken and a dog, and a rhinoceros with a pouch. Not only that, a man with grass growing on his head and his body in a box also appeared in everyone's sight. This man's face was full of fear. He could feel a very strong sword flying past him just now. There are so many strange animals. Luffy had a look of confusion on his face. Is this human-like guy also some kind of strange animal? Luffy pointed to the man with a tree growing above his head and his body inside the box. You are an animal, I am a human, and my name is Kamen. The man yelled at Luffy very angrily. What, it turns out to be a human. I thought it was an animal. Luffy looked very disappointed. Are you just pretending to be a fool here? Zoro put his hand on the handle of the knife, ready to draw it at any time. Chen Feng looked at the person in front of him with interest. Of course he knew the name of the person in front of him, but he didn't care about him at all. He looked at those strange animals. These animals are indeed the same as in the original work, they are some very strange combinations. Chen Feng even wanted to dissect these animals to see how strange their physiological structures were. This strange body structure cannot be seen in the original world. Under Chen Feng's gaze, these animals were very scared, and they seemed to realize something. After Zoro pulled out his two swords, the human in front of him told Luffy and the others everything. After Carmen's narration, they knew the whole story. So they decided to help Carmen find the treasure on the island. At this time, Luffy turned to look at Tatsuka's, who was looking at the strange animals. Vice Captain, do you want to come with us to find the treasure? Chen Feng nodded and stood up. Then let's go and see it together. After saying this, he looked away. He already had a rough understanding of the body structure of this group of animals. I didn't expect that this strange structure could survive normally. It's really interesting. After seeing Chen Feng no longer looking at him and them, the expressions of the animals became relaxed at night. Who is your vice captain? Why are my friends so afraid of him? Kamen asked Luffy in confusion. Our vice captain is the very famous pirate hunter Shinigami. Usopp introduced with pride. Yes, that's right. Luffy nodded. Pirate hunter, Shinigami. I haven't heard of it, but why are there pirate hunters on your ship? Aren't you pirates? Although Carmen didn't understand, he was greatly shocked. Yes, before joining our pirate group, the vice captain was a pirate hunter, but now he is a pirate and also our partner. Luffy explained to Kamen very seriously. Oh, is that so? But why are my friends so afraid of him? Carmen was still very puzzled. At this time, Zoro smiled and hit the last shot. Isn't it normal for your friends to be afraid of the deputy captain? Many pirates are afraid of the deputy captain. They will be scared to death when they see the deputy captain. After Zoro and others' explanation, Carmen accepted it. Of course, the biggest reason is that his animal companions aren't that scared anymore. So everyone began to rush towards the island with the legendary treasure. Chen Feng looked at those strange animals. The world of pirates was indeed quite interesting. The next step will be more interesting. You will reach that place soon and try to see if you can kill Hawkeye there. 
he estimates that his combat power is above that of a general. If Hawkeye is concerned, his current strength should be around that of a general. Soon, everyone arrived at the location of the legendary treasure. Looking at the top of the mountain, Luffy ran towards it without hesitation. Chen Feng was not interested in this at all, because he already knew that there was nothing there. When Luffy reached the top of the mountain, he turned his back to everyone and shouted something they didn't expect. Everyone was very surprised, why did Luffy say that? At this time, Chen Feng lowered his head and looked at Cayman. Carmen seemed to realize something. The boxes up there are all empty, and there are no treasures at all, as you should already know. Chen Feng's voice rang in everyone's ears. No, it's a lie, right? The legendary treasure is actually fake. Usopp couldn't believe it. What? The legendary treasure is fake. Nami's heart was broken. Originally, she was thinking about whether she could share some of this legendary treasure. But now, her dream was completely shattered. Zoro looked at this scene calmly, he was not interested in the treasure. Actually, I have already guessed this result, Luffy, thank you very much. Kamen murmured to himself, tears flowing from his eyes. Finally, everyone accepted the fact that there was no treasure. Soon, Luffy ran towards the bottom of the mountain. Kamen, do you want to join our pirate group? Just like in the original work, Luffy extended an invitation to Kamen. Carmen also refused as in the original work, saying that it was better for him to be with his animal friends. After Kamen refused, Chen Feng and others walked towards the ship. They are going on a new journey. After everyone returned to the boat, they continued sailing into the distance. At this time, Nami was very sad. She felt that she had lost a lot of treasure. Luffy was very happy. What he experienced today made him feel very interesting. Chen Feng stood at the bow of the ship, blowing the sea breeze, and looking at the island gradually disappearing. Chen Feng suddenly had some new insights in his heart. He slowly pulled out the knife in his hand. After the long knife was slowly unsheathed, with a bang, a huge waterspout appeared in the sea. Chen Feng looked at waterspout with a smile and sheathed his sword. This time he realized a very powerful move, which was very useful on the sea. And it is not only useful on the sea, but also on land. What happened? What's going on with that waterspout over there? This kind of weather shouldn't happen. Nami looked at the huge waterspout not far away in shock. From her knowledge, it was impossible for a waterspout to appear in the current weather. At this time, Chen Feng's voice sounded in her ears. Don't be afraid or surprised, it's just me trying out a move. As Chen Feng finished speaking, the waterspout completely disappeared. So that waterspout was actually created by the deputy captain. It's really amazing. Luffy was very impressed. The vice captain is really strong. Usopp's words also contain sincere admiration. Is this guy really a human? Can a water spout be created easily? Nami couldn't believe it at all. Did that guy actually create a stronger sword skill of his own? He is really a target that can be pursued all the time. Zoro silently held the hilt of his sword. Amid everyone's sighs, Chen Feng turned his head and walked towards the rocking chair and lay down on the rocking chair. Okay, let's continue sailing. The Grand Route is still far away, and the New World is the more interesting place. Understood, Vice Captain. Everyone responded in unison. After another day of sailing, everyone gathered around a table to discuss things. Everyone, do you think we are missing anyone on the ship? What kind of partners should we find? Luffy looked at everyone curiously. Is there anyone missing on the ship? There are very few people on our ship, so we must be short of people. Usopp answered seriously. I think there are too few people on our ship. The Straw Hat Pirates should become a legendary large ship group, with at least 8,000 people. Usopp expressed his opinion. 8,000 people, but I think that's too much and not very good. Luffy denied Usopp's view. Then who do you want more people, Luffy? Usopp was very puzzled. Luffy thought seriously. Suddenly, his eyes lit up. I think we're still missing musicians on board. Musician, why do you want that thing? Zoro frowned. Because pirates all have to sing, so we need musicians. Luffy gave his own explanation. But where are we going to find musicians? Luffy, you're not kidding. Nami on the side was already a little helpless. Is Luffy serious? What kind of people are there on this boat, and they still need musicians? 
Why not just find an animal trainer? Why don't they call them the Straw Hat Pirates and just call them the Straw Hat Circus? Vice Captain, who do you think is missing on our ship? Luffy asked Chin Feng this question. Chin Feng turned to look at Luffy and expressed his opinion. I think the ship is still short of a cook and a doctor. Since we have to find musicians, it would be good to set up a singing group. Doctors, chefs, and a singing group. Luffy thought carefully about Chin Feng's words. Half a minute later, Luffy nodded solemnly. Yes, we need doctors and chefs, and most importantly, musicians. We can also ask for a singing group. Then we can dance happily together. Luffy stood up as he spoke, with an excited smile on his face. In that case, it will definitely be interesting. Usopp was also thinking about the future. Nami was stroking her forehead. It's okay for Luffy to mess around. Why did the vice captain also join in the trouble? The future of this pirate group is worrying. After confirming these things, everyone set off towards the Grand Route again. One afternoon two days later, Chen Feng was lying on the rocking chair and enjoying the sea breeze, which was very comfortable. Suddenly, Chen Feng opened his eyes and saw a small boat approaching. Three seconds later, there was a thud and a figure jumped onto the boat. Chen Feng held the bloodthirsty knife and unsheathed it. The sharp sword light swept towards the figure, and a crisp sound sounded. The big knife in the figure's hand was chopped into several pieces, and a strand of broken hair floated down in the wind. The figure who had just stepped onto the boat found the words in his mouth blocked by the feeling of death. Chen Feng sheathed the knife and continued to close his eyes. I advise you not to take another step, otherwise the next knife will cut off your head. The person swallowed his saliva and cautiously raised his head to look at Chen Feng. After seeing Chen Feng's appearance clearly, the fear on the figure's face slowly turned into excitement. You, no, are you, Shinigami Sama? After hearing this, Chen Feng opened his eyes and spoke. Zoro, come out and deal with this guy. Understood, Vice Captain. Although Zoro didn't know which guy needed to be dealt with, he still responded. The figures on the deck became even more excited and shocked when they heard the sound in the cabin. Zoro, is the eldest brother also on this boat? Who is here to stir up trouble again? Zoro pulled out his knife and walked out of the cabin. Seeing Zoro walking out of the cabin, the figure on the deck shouted excitedly. Brother, it is indeed you. I didn't expect to meet you here. Johnny, looking at the person who spoke in front of him, Zoro was also stunned. The man in front of him turned out to be his brother. He immediately looked at Chen Feng. Vice Captain, this guy is my brother, so there is no need to deal with it. I know, so I let you solve it yourself. Chen Feng's voice sounded in the ears of the two of them. Thank you, Vice Captain, Zoro felt sincerely grateful and happy. If the Deputy Captain hadn't known him as his brother, then his brother must have lost his head. After Johnny heard Chen Feng's words, he immediately knelt down and his tone was very sincere. Thank you, Shinigami-sama, for sparing your life. You can handle it yourself and don't disturb my rest. Chen Feng waved his hand. Understood, Vice Captain. I understand, Shinigami-sama. Zoro came to Johnny. Johnny, why are you here, where's Joseph? Joseph. Johnny seemed to suddenly think of something, and his expression changed drastically. Brother, you must save Joseph, he seems to be sick. Don't worry, where is Joseph and what exactly happened? Brother, come with me. Johnny immediately walked towards the side of the boat. Zoro followed Johnny and looked below the boat. There was a familiar figure lying on the boat below. The figure was covered in black. Johnny, what's wrong with Joseph? I don't know what happened. He suddenly became like this. Johnny's tone was also helpless. Upon seeing this, Zoro did not continue to ask questions, and took Joseph on board with Chang Chang. Zoro came to Chen Feng. Vice Captain, my brother is sick and needs medical treatment. Can I ask, Deputy Captain, if you can save him? Zoro is also a dead horse and a living doctor. Joseph is in a very bad situation now. The only trustworthy person on the ship is Shinigami. Shinigami is best at killing people, but maybe he can save people. As for the other three people, Zoro didn't believe they could treat such injuries at all. Go to the warehouse in the cabin to get some food and some fruits such as oranges, and just feed it to him. Chen Feng answered the question without opening his eyes. Thank you, Deputy Captain, I'll go right away. 
Zoro has now developed a good habit of not refuting Chen Feng's words. Johnny looked at Chen Feng in confusion. He didn't quite understand why Shinigami asked his eldest brother to get food instead of medicine. Soon, Zoro came back with food and fruits in his hands. At this time, Joseph's nose started to move when he smelled the aroma of fruits and food. Two seconds later, his eyes opened and he stared at the food and fruit in front of him. Joseph, are you awake? Johnny was very surprised. Zoro was also shocked. Joseph, who was unconscious just now, had now opened his eyes. Brother Zoro, give me the food and fruits you have in your hands. I'm going to starve to death. Oh, okay, I'll give it to you right away. Zoro was stunned for a moment, but still handed the food and fruit in his hand to Joseph. Joseph took the fruit and started eating like crazy. Zoro and Johnny saw this scene, but they didn't care and looked at Chen Fang. Zoro bowed his body respectfully and sounded very grateful. Thank you, Deputy Captain, for saving Joseph. Johnny followed suit, with an expression of admiration and gratitude on his face. Thank you very much, Shinigami-sama, thank you for saving Joseph. Chen Feng waved his hand and spoke calmly. Actually, he has no serious illness. He just has scurvy and is too hungry. That's right, the Joseph in front of him was in his current situation simply because he had no fresh fruits to supplement his vitamins and he suffered from scurvy. In addition, he was very hungry and fainted from hunger. The medical skills in the pirate world are actually not particularly developed, at least they don't know about scurvy. But if you want to say that there is no good medical skills here, it is impossible. Marine, world government and the celestial dragons have mastered a very high level of medical care. But for these pirates, they did not master much medical skills, and their medical level was relatively backward. Therefore, they often died due to insufficient medical treatment. Therefore, every pirate ship must have a ship's doctor on board. Even if there is no superb medical skills, at least he will not die from scurvy or bacterial infection. At this time, Zoro's understanding of Shinigami changed again. He didn't expect that Shinigami would still see these symptoms. It was really amazing. At this time, Johnny also worshipped Shinigami even more. From his previous worship of the strong man, he now worshipped the person who saved his brother's life. At this time, other people in the cabin also heard the sound and came out. What happened, Vice Captain, Zoro? Luffy rubbed his eyes in confusion. Yes, what happened to Zoro? Usopp also asked loudly. What could be the matter? The Vice Captain must have solved it. Nami had a helpless look on her face. She finally got a beauty sleep and was woken up. Hey, who are these two people? Luffy looked at the two people in front of him in confusion. Zoro, who are these two people? Do you know them? Hearing Luffy's loud shout, Usopp and Nami also looked towards the deck ahead, where there were two strangers. Oh, you said they are two of them. They are my brothers. This guy's name is Johnny, and the one who is eating is named Joseph. Zoro pointed at the two figures in front of him and introduced them. Oh, it turns out he's Zoro's brother. What a coincidence. Luffy nodded. What, it turned out that I met a brother. I thought something happened. Usopp also had a smile and sudden realization on his face. Is it just this little thing? This little thing disturbs my beauty sleep, it's really too much. Nami was a little angry, and she became more and more dissatisfied with this green algae head. Wow, you have a pretty good appetite. Luffy smiled and ran up to Joseph. After the conversation, they roughly understood what the situation was now. They were all shocked when they learned that it was the deputy captain who saved Joseph. Vice Captain, I didn't expect you to be able to heal diseases. You're not a doctor, are you? Luffy was stunned and said why he didn't know this before. You're lying. Does Shinigami know medical skills? Shouldn't he only know how to kill people? How can he save people? Nami was also very shocked. It turns out that Vice Captain Shinigami can still cure diseases. It's so shocking. Usopp's admiration was beyond words. Chen Feng sat up from the rocking chair, looked at everyone, and waved his hands. I don't have any medical skills, I just know some simple medical knowledge. The guy's condition is not that serious. He just lacks fruits and has fainted from hunger. Doctor, I definitely can't be counted, so doctors, chefs and song and dance troops all need to continue looking. Chen Feng didn't want to admit that he was a doctor. 
He had no idea of curing diseases and saving lives. It didn't matter if he killed people. As for medical skills, he actually knows it. In the past, when a person killed pirates at sea, he would inevitably get injured, so he actually acquired some medical skills after hacking some pirate ship doctors to death. Not only that, in order to better treat himself and live on the ship, he also beat many so-called famous doctors to near death, oh, and obtained their medical skills. Finally, they used their medical skills to save them from death. But if you meet a quack doctor, you won't be able to save your life. Of course, Chen Feng actually acquired many other skills, but he had no intention of speaking out. He didn't want to be so tired. He was still comfortable being the vice captain as he was now, without having to do anything. Yes, that's right, we do need to find doctors and chefs. We need doctors to treat our illnesses, and we need chefs to cook for us. Luffy spoke seriously again. Yes, we do need doctors and chefs. Usopp also agreed with his face. What happened today made him know that without doctors, sailing at sea may be very inconvenient. It seems that finding a doctor should really be put on the agenda. Nami looked at Joseph, who still looked not very healthy, with a solemn expression. She didn't want to become like this, it was too ugly and unacceptable. At this time, Johnny on the side said, Shinigami-sama, are you looking for the ship's doctor and cook? Although I don't know where to find the ship's doctor, but I know where to find the cook. What, you actually know where to find a chef? Tell me quickly. Luffy looked at Johnny in surprise, his face full of curiosity. Johnny nodded and turned to look at Zoro. Brother, you actually know that place, right? After all, the eagle-eyed man you are looking for is also nearby. Zoro's eyes flashed and he nodded. Yes, he did know that place, there was indeed a chef in that place, and most importantly, there were rumors of that man's hauntings in that place. Where is that place? Um, Zoro. Luffy immediately turned to look at Zoro. Usopp and Nami also stared at Zoro. This green algae head actually knows where the chef is and doesn't tell him. It's really too much. Nami was very dissatisfied with Zoro's concealment. It seems Zoro knows where there is a chef, but why didn't he mention it before? Usopp was also very confused. Looking at the crew's gaze, Zoro was also a little embarrassed. He cleared his throat and whispered. You haven't asked me before, so I didn't say anything. Besides, I do have my target in that place, but I don't want to implicate you. Hearing Zoro's explanation, Luffy laughed, walked towards Zoro, and punched Zoro in the chest. We are partners, why are we talking about involvement? We can just face it together. But since it's your target Zoro, that guy must be very strong, right? Let's hear who that target is. Yes, Zoro, since we are partners, let's face it together. Can you tell us who the target is? Usopp also had a smile on his face, and he was also very curious about this target. Green algae head, you'd better tell your target and don't hide it from us in the future. Nami looked at Zoro with a dissatisfied look. She didn't want to be implicated. After Zoro heard these words, he didn't look at Luffy and the others. He turned to look at Chen Fang. Deputy Captain, you should already know my target very well. He is the world's number one swordsman, Hawkeye. At the same time, that guy is also the seven warlords of the sea. Chen Feng nodded, indicating that he knew. The world's best swordsman, Hawkeye. He sounds so strong, he deserves to be Zoro. Luffy's expression became very excited, happy that his partner had such a powerful goal. It's a lie. The world's number one swordsman, and he's also the seven warlords of the sea. Is Zoro's target actually such a person? Usopp's mouth almost dropped to the ground. This green algae head actually wants to challenge such a person and target such a person. He thinks he is the deputy captain. He is really an idiot. Nami's evaluation of Zoro was even lower. She hates this kind of guy the most. He always likes to do things that seek death. Zoro glanced at Luffy and the other three, his expressions calm, he didn't care what others thought of him. But he wanted to know how far apart he was from Hawkeye, and how far apart he was from the vice captain. Zoro looked at Chen Feng and tightened his grip on his knife. Everyone, let's go to the place Zoro said and find our chef there. Luffy shouted excitedly. Yes, let's find our chef. Zoro can find his target. Usopp also shouted. We are going to find the seven warlords of the sea now. Are we a little too anxious? 
What if we can't defeat them? Will that guy kill us? Nami was still a little worried. When she turned her head and looked at Chen Feng, the worry in her heart dropped a lot. That Hawkeye may not necessarily be stronger than Vice Captain Shinigami. With the Vice Captain here, it shouldn't be a big problem. Nami thought in his mind. By the way, Zoro, where did that place come from? Luffy asked the most crucial question. That place is called Sea Restaurant. Zoro replied. Get ready to change course and go to the Sea Restaurant to find the chef and eagle eye. Finally, with Chen Feng's conclusion, the course began to change, heading towards the restaurant on the sea. The course changed smoothly. Chen Feng stood at the bow of the ship and gently placed his hand on the handle of the knife. I hope you don't disappoint me too much, Hawkeye. He already wants to try to see who is the best swordsman in the world. If Hawkeye is hacked to death, then the world's best swordsman will change hands. The weather was just right and the wind direction was very good. The straw hat pirate ship's flying melee sailed smoothly toward the restaurant on the sea. Time came again on the morning of the next day, and the bright sunshine shone on the deck of the pirate ship. Chen Feng was still lying on the rocking chair, blowing the cool sea breeze. The sea was calm and calm until a marine ship entered Chen Feng's perception. The marine ship seemed to have noticed the existence of the Fatian Mary and moved rapidly in this direction. After Chen Feng saw this situation, he stood up directly. When the marine ship approached, he slashed with his sword. Five huge waterspouts formed on the sea and rolled towards the marine ship. Sweeping by the waterspout, the marine ship was completely destroyed and turned into broken wooden boards, and the bodies of the marines also disappeared. After seeing this situation, Chen Feng nodded with satisfaction and sheathed his sword. After solving this little episode, Chen Feng continued to lie down and blow the wind. After another day, Chen Feng stood at the bow of the ship and looked at a building in front of him, which was the restaurant on the sea. In that place, there is one of the straw hats, the chef, Sanji. But Chen Feng is now very curious, what will that guy do if he sees him? Will that guy still agree to join the straw hats? The above two questions are still unknown. Zoro also immediately walked out of the cabin. He also looked at the restaurant on the sea and held his knife tightly. Will Hawkeye really appear in this place? This place is already the highest place where it may appear. If it doesn't exist here, it may be difficult to encounter it. Zoro thought to himself. As the restaurant on the sea finally here, I feel a little rusty. Luffy kept moving his body. Is that place the legendary restaurant on the sea? I told Kaya a lie before, but I didn't expect that I would have the opportunity to actually come here. Usopp also looked at the buildings in the distance excitedly. If this is a sea restaurant, where will the seven warlords of the sea appear? Nami looked around nervously. Nami, move the boat over. Chen Feng's voice sounded. Understood, Vice Captain. The nervous Nami immediately became calm and began to control the rudder towards the restaurant on the sea. As long as the vice captain is here, that Hawkeye shouldn't be arrogant. Nami kept emboldening herself. Ten minutes later, the Straw Hat Pirates ship successfully arrived in front of the restaurant on the sea. Chen Feng took the lead to walk towards the High High restaurant. He also came here half a year ago. The food here tasted really good and left a deep memory for him. Luffy and others also immediately ran towards the restaurant on the sea. The vice captain actually ran so fast this time. He must be too cunning. Luffy shouted as he rushed towards the restaurant on the sea. Luffy plans to be the first to enter the sea restaurant. As Luffy wished, he was indeed the first person in the pirate group to rush into the restaurant on the sea. Food, food, I want food, bring your best food. Luffy shouted while knocking on the table. A waiter came over and hurriedly stopped Luffy. Guest, please don't make any noise. If you want to order, I can help you. Luffy turned to look at the waiter and said, Oh, well, bring over all the best food you have here, I'll try them all. Are you sure it's all customers? There was hesitation and confusion on the waiter's face. Follow what he said, don't worry, we can eat it. Chen Feng's voice sounded from behind the waiter. The waiter immediately turned around and saw a familiar figure that shocked him. Is it Mr. Shinigami? Do you know this customer? The waiter sounded excited. Yes, we know each other, he is the captain of our pirate group. Chen Feng nodded. Pirates, captain, Mr. Shinigami, you, there was confusion on the waiter's face. It's okay, 
Just stop asking and tell the chef what dishes we need. Chen Feng waved his hand. Okay, Mr. Shinigami, I'll go right away. The waiter suppressed his doubts and walked towards the kitchen. After Chen Feng saw the waiter leaving, he also walked to the dining table and sat down. Vice Captain, have you been here? Luffy asked curiously. Yes, I came here half a year ago and the food here is really good. Chen Feng answered Luffy's question. The rest of the people also walked into the restaurant, and they also heard the conversation between the deputy captain Chen Feng and the waiter. They were very surprised by this. It turns out that the deputy captain has been to this restaurant before. So the chef proposed by the deputy captain actually works in this restaurant. This incident reminded Zoro of the navigator candidate Chen Feng mentioned before. Does this place also have a chef chosen by the vice captain? Zoro looked at Chen Feng. Soon, Zoro no longer had any doubts. If there was a candidate, it wouldn't matter. It had nothing to do with him anyway. Chen Feng looked at the high high restaurant, and there was really no difference between it and half a year ago. When he came to the restaurant on the sea half a year ago, he was going to try the food of the legendary restaurant on the sea. But unfortunately, they encountered a pirate group, surrounded the place, and wanted to force the chef of the sea restaurant to cook for them. Of course the chefs at the sea restaurant disagreed. They could entertain pirates, but they could not be forced to cook for others. What's more, this pirate group went too far. They even refused to allow the restaurant on the sea to do business and demanded that only one pirate group cook for them. This pirate group is still very powerful. They came back from the new world, and at least the people in the sea restaurant can't stop them. Seeing that he couldn't eat at the Hai Hai restaurant, Chen Feng sent away the group of people who disturbed his meal, and also made some extra money. It is for this reason that the people at Hai Hai restaurant admire him very much and say that he can get a 30% discount on dining here. Chef, Mr. Shinigami is here. The waiter who received Chen Feng said excitedly to the person in front of him. Oh, Mr. Shinigami is here. Did you treat him well? The old man with his beard and pigtails looked at the waiter. The old man in front of me is none other than Zapu, the owner of the restaurant on the sea. We'll treat you well, but Mr. Shinigami wants to eat the best food we have here, so I'll come to the kitchen. Since it was Mr. Shinigami's request, let's do Mr. Shinigami's first. I'll take action myself, please speed up a little bit. Okay, chef, I'll go entertain Shinigami-san and the others first. Them, Zapu was a little confused. Yes, Mr. Shinigami, it seems that he has joined a pirate group now, and everyone from their pirate group is here. Are you kidding? Pirate hunter Shinigami will join the pirate group. Zapu didn't believe what the waiter said at all. Although I don't believe it, Mr. Shinigami said so, and I didn't ask any more questions. The waiter also looked helpless and confused. Did Mr. Shinigami say it himself? If so, that would be interesting. The disbelief on Zep's face turned into calmness. Since this sentence was said by Shinigami himself, it should be true. No matter what Shinigami is thinking, it has nothing to do with them. They just need to cook well for their benefactor. So Zapu started cooking himself, and the waiter immediately walked outside. At this time, a chef next to him looked at another chef. This chef is not wearing a chef's uniform, but a black suit, with yellow hair and very distinctive eyebrows. Yes, he is our Blackfoot Sanji, the original chef of the Straw Hats. But then, it's not necessarily true. The chef who looked at Sanji spoke. Sanji, Mr. Shinigami is here, what are you going to do now? Sanji was cutting vegetables when he suddenly stopped. That's right, I really should go take a look. Sanji put down the kitchen knife and turned to walk outside. His expression was hidden in the darkness and could not be seen clearly. Sanji. The chef's raised hand paused in the air, and his words were choked in his throat. At this time, Chen Feng and his party were discussing this sea restaurant. Luffy, Johnny, and Joseph were very excited, and they intensely discussed the food at the sea restaurant. Joseph also knew that Shinigami saved him, and he was very grateful to Chen Feng. A smile suddenly appeared on Chen Feng's expressionless face. He raised the corners of his mouth and looked in one direction. In that direction, a man wearing a black suit and a cigarette in his mouth came over. The man quickly came to the dining table and stared at Chen Feng. Mr. Shinigami, long time no see. Chen Feng smiled and looked at Sanji in front of him. 
It's been a long time indeed. Sanji looked at the smiling Shinigami in front of him. The veins on his forehead were beating constantly and his fists were clenched. It was this guy in front of me who killed his father and siblings. This guy was indeed Shinigami. Yes, Chen Feng went to West Blue three months ago. There, he eliminated the largest pirate force in West Blue, Germa 66. Sanji is also a member of the Germa 66 family, but he has been rebellious since he was a child and escaped from there. He couldn't bear to see that guy transforming his son and daughter, but that guy was his father after all, and those people were also his brothers and sisters. At this time a voice sounded. Vice Captain, who is this guy? Do you know him? Luffy was a little confused. I don't know why, but I'm inexplicably unhappy with this guy. Does the deputy captain need me to deal with him? This guy looks at you with murderous intent in his eyes. Zoro looked unhappy and already put his hand on the handle of the knife. After hearing what their elder brother said, Johnny and Joseph also looked at Sanji with wary expressions. This guy actually dared to kill Master Shinigami. How dare he? Hey, what do you want to do? Do you know who our vice captain is? Usopp asked angrily. Sanji, do you want revenge? Chen Feng looked into Sanji's eyes. If you want, you can take action at any time. After Chen Feng finished these two sentences, he lowered his head, picked up the water, and drank it. Nami has been watching the man in suit walking over. This guy seems to be incompatible with this place, and he has come with bad intentions. From what the vice captain just said, does this guy actually have a grudge against Shinigami? Will he dare to take revenge? Nami is very curious and looking forward to this. Sanji took the cigarette out of his mouth with his hand, and finally decided not to do it now. Mr. Shinigami, I know you are a pirate hunter, and they are indeed pirates. There is nothing wrong with you killing them. But they are my family after all. I will definitely take revenge on you, but not now. I think I will definitely not be your opponent now. If you want to do it now, you can do it directly. I have no complaints. After hearing these words, Chen Feng laughed. Since you don't want to do anything now, go back to the kitchen and prepare the food. We ordered quite a lot of food today. Thank you very much, Mr. Shinigami. Please wait a moment. Sanji bowed and walked towards the kitchen. After we finish eating, I have a proposal to tell you, Sanji. I think you might be interested. Chen Feng's voice sounded in Sanji's ears again. After hearing this, Sanji paused for a moment, and then continued walking to the kitchen. No problem, Mr. Shinigami, I am willing to listen to your proposal. Chen Feng turned to look at Luffy at this time. What do you think about this guy being the ship's cook, Luffy? Hey, what does this mean, Vice Captain? Luffy was stunned by this sentence. Chef, isn't this the chef you're talking about? Zoro was also a little surprised. But doesn't that guy want to take revenge on you? Why did you choose him to be the chef? Vice Captain, Usopp also looked confused. The expectation and curiosity on Nami's face turned into shock. No, did she hear it correctly? The Vice Captain actually wanted that guy to be their chef. What on earth is Shinigami thinking? Nami has no idea at all. Yes, I want that guy to be the chef of the pirate group. That guy's cooking skills should be the second among the chefs on this ship, and he will soon become the first. Chen Feng said with a smile. But doesn't that guy have a grudge against you? And he threatened revenge. Usopp asked the question that everyone was most concerned about. You don't have to worry anymore. Chen Feng smiled. And whether he can come on board and be our chef is not up to me alone. You still have the decision-making power. Is that so? That's okay. Usopp breathed a sigh of relief. Although the deputy captain was not afraid of letting that guy become the cook on their ship, he was still afraid that the guy would poison himself. If he poisoned his food, it would be really difficult to prevent him. Vice Captain, I think that guy is very unhappy. Otherwise, let's replace the chef. Zoro had a disdainful smile on his face. Nami heard Zoro's words and nodded in agreement. This was one of the few times when she felt that what the green algae had said was correct. I think so too. Deputy Leader. Nami also expressed his opinion. Vice Captain, you said that guy is the best cook on this ship, is that true? Luffy said in a very serious tone. Chen Feng glanced at Luffy amusedly. Sure enough, this guy's mind was a bit strange. 
He clearly said that he would be in the future, but now he was only second, but Luffy only listened to the latter part. Yes, he will indeed be better than any cook on the ship in the future. Chen Fang answered Luffy with a smile. Well, let's let him be our chef. Luffy punched the table. It's a lie, Luffy, are you serious? Usopp's face was filled with disbelief. Nami's face was also full of shock and confusion. She couldn't understand Luffy's brain circuit at all. Zoro shook his head helplessly. Sure enough, Luffy was not an ordinary person. I object. It was impossible for Nami to agree. Why, he is the best chef. Luffy had a look of innocence and confusion on his face. That guy wants revenge on the vice captain. Are you serious, Luffy? Usopp also stood up. But didn't the vice captain say there's no need to worry? Since there's no need to worry, what's the point of objecting? Luffy was still puzzled. But we will be worried. What if that guy poisons our food? That guy is a chef. Nami yelled at Luffy angrily. Usopp also had a look of approval on his face, and Zoro was also thoughtful. At this time, Sanji's voice sounded. Don't worry, I can't poison food. And I won't allow anyone to do that. Food is the most sacred thing in the world, and I will not allow anyone to desecrate or ruin it, including myself. Who told you to speak? Nami turned his head angrily. Sanji looked at Nami's angry look and froze on the spot. He waved his hand apologetically. I'm very sorry, beautiful lady, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but please don't desecrate the food. Who would desecrate food? After Nami saw that the speaker was Sanji, he sat on the stool and muttered in a low voice. Sanji saw Nami sit down and walk towards the table. He gently put down the food in his hand. After putting down the food, he turned to look at Chen Feng. Mr. Shinigami, the proposal you are going to make is not to let me join your pirate group, right? Yes. That's right, that's indeed the case. Chen Feng nodded. That really shocked me, Mr. Shinigami. I remember you have always been a pirate hunter, right? Why do you suddenly want to be a pirate? Sanji looked at Chen Feng very seriously, hoping to get his answer. Chen Feng smiled. This world is free, and you can do whatever you want. I am a pirate hunter just because the heads of those pirates can be exchanged for bounties. As for why I want to be a pirate, Actually, it doesn't matter. I want to go to the new world to see it. The world is still too boring. Then I would like to ask Mr. Shinigami, do you think it is normal for you to be killed by a pirate hunter after becoming a pirate? Sanji clenched his fists. You don't think that pirates are bad and pirate hunters are good people, then you are really naive, Sanji. Chin Feng and Sanji looked at each other. There is nothing good or bad in this world. As long as you kill people, you must have the consciousness to be killed. It doesn't matter if you are a pirate or something else, they are all equal. Sanji looked at Chen Feng again for a few seconds, then nodded. You are right, Mr. Shinigami, there are no good or bad people in this world. To kill someone, you must have the consciousness of being killed. This is indeed the truth. But I will still take revenge on you until the day I can kill you. You're always welcome. Chen Feng laughed. Sanji laughed too. Mr. Shinigami, if you are willing to let me join your pirate group under such circumstances, then I am very willing to join. Are you really willing to join us? Luffy looked very excited. Yes, I am indeed willing. Only by following Shinigami can I know when I can succeed in revenge. Moreover, I also have my own ideas about joining your pirate group. I'm going to look for the legendary All Blue, which has the most and best ingredients in the world. I heard it's somewhere along the Grand Line, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to go out to sea with you. Sorry, excuse me, I have to continue cooking. Sanji turned around and left, heading towards the kitchen. Great, we have a chef now, Usopp, did you hear? We have a chef. Luffy was very excited. Looking at the excited Luffy, Usopp didn't know what to say. He had no idea what Luffy and the vice captain were thinking. The world of Shinigami is so difficult to understand. As for his own captain, Luffy's world is also difficult to understand. Do you really want that guy with curly eyebrows to join? I think he's very unhappy, what should I do? Zoro said directly. If you want to see him unhappy, you can just kill him. If you compare with each other, you can make progress together. Anyway, your goals are actually similar. Chen Feng's voice rang in everyone's ears. That seemed like a good idea, Zoro laughed. 
he plans to surpass the deputy captain in the future, so he will take action, and the curly eyebrow also needs to take action if he wants to kill the deputy captain for revenge. From this point of view, the two of them are actually about the same, but he just feels very unhappy when he sees that guy, so he should find an opportunity to kill him first and then talk about it. By the way, there is another very important question. Usopp suddenly exclaimed. What's the problem, Usopp? Luffy asked inarticulately while eating the food that Sanji had just brought. Why does that guy in the black suit seek revenge from the vice captain? Usopp looked at Chen Feng. The rest of the people also looked at Chen Feng. That guy's father and family were pirates and they were killed by me. After Chen Feng answered, he also started eating food. Is that guy's family also pirates? That's why he was killed by the vice captain. That's it. Usopp suddenly realized. Pirate hunter Shinigami kills pirates, and the pirate's family wants revenge. This doesn't seem to be a problem. Oh, that's it. Luffy nodded and continued to eat the food. As for Nami, everyone is numb. Who are the people on the ship? Originally, there was a green algae head who wanted to challenge the deputy captain, which was already quite uncomfortable, but now there is a curly eyebrow who threatens to kill the deputy captain, and he also joins the pirate group. What is going on? Who can tell her? Who can save her? After doubting that her life was over, Nami was ready to eat some food to calm down her shock, but when she saw the clean plates on the table, she clenched her fists. Luffy, you guy. Ah, uh, what's wrong, Nami? Luffy looked up from his food in confusion. You ate all the food, what are we going to eat? Nami felt she had had enough. But won't food continue to be served in a while? Luffy was smarter than Monkey at this time. He even knew that food would continue to be served in a while. Nami clenched her fists and endured it for the time being. Luffy, please listen to me. When we distribute the food later, you will be the last to eat. Otherwise, none of us will be able to eat. Do you understand? Looking at the angry Nami, Luffy nodded like a chicken pecking at rice. I understand, Nami, you can eat the food for a while first. Luffy's face was full of grievances. Chen Feng laughed when he saw this scene. As expected of Nami, she is born with the ability to suppress Luffy. After Nami saw Luffy nodding, he turned to look at Chen Feng with a smile. Vice Captain, you will eat first later. Looking at Nami's flattering smile, Chen Feng smiled. As time went by, the food kept coming. But because the food was served too slowly, Luffy could only watch helplessly from the side, with that aggrieved expression, it was really miserable. But the rest of the people didn't sympathize with his thoughts, because if they sympathized with that guy, who would sympathize with them? Half an hour later, everyone put down their tableware with satisfaction. They had finished eating. It is indeed a famous sea restaurant. The food tastes so delicious. After Usopp finished speaking, he burped. Yes, it tastes really good. Zoro nodded in agreement. Nami feels the same way, the food here tastes really good. Yes. It's really delicious. Johnny and Joseph also praised it. Luffy nodded weakly after hearing everyone's words. He felt like he was going to starve to death. At this time, Sanji's figure appeared again, with food in his hand. Luffy looked at the food in Sanji's hand, his eyes shining. Everyone, you won't eat again this time, right? Although Luffy was asking, his eyes never left the food in Sanji's hand. We are full, you can eat the rest yourself. The rest of the people also nodded. So it was Luffy's meal time next. Sanji looked at Luffy who was eating like crazy and laughed. For this kind of customer, he is very satisfied and does not waste food at all, which can be said to be the best compliment to the chef. From this point of view, it seems good for him to join this pirate group, at least there will be no people who waste food here. However, as for Shinigami, how can I defeat him? Sanji turned to look at Chenfeng aside. According to the information he received, Shinigami went to West Blue three months ago. Most of the famous pirates in West Blue were killed. The most famous of them is of course Jerma 66. He once heard the pirates and marines here mention that Shinigami no longer has any opponents in the world. Even in the new world, it should not encounter many opponents. It has only been a year since Shinigami was born out of thin air, but he has already reached this point. Does he really have a chance to kill him and complete his revenge? Soon, Sanji became determined. Regardless of whether he can do it or not, he must do it. 
Sanji glanced at Shinigami again and walked towards the kitchen. He still had a lot of cooking to do. After finishing his meal, Chen Feng admired the scenery outside the window and inside the restaurant. Looking at the harmonious atmosphere here, Chen Feng felt that it was a very good choice to deal with those marines in advance. Otherwise, it will affect their ability to eat. But next time, there should be a wave of people who don't have a long eye to come. At this time, Sanji walked behind Zapu who was cooking. Old man, I want to join Mr. Shinigami's pirate group, and then I will take revenge on him when I am strong enough. Zapu didn't look back, but his voice rang out. If you want to leave, just go. You are not really needed here. Old man, you guy. Veins popped up on Sanji's forehead, a little angry. Then he quickly regained his composure. Understood, I will leave soon, but don't worry, I will not challenge him when I don't have the strength. And I also plan to look for all blue on the way. That place must exist, and I will find it. After Sanji said these words, he left directly. After Sanji left, Zapu had a smile on his face. Child, this is really not the place for you to stay. You still have a long life, and you should not continue to stay in this sea restaurant. Since you have planned to find all blue, you must prove its existence. As for revenge, it doesn't really matter, right? But it all still depends on your choice. Go on firmly and don't do anything you regret. After Zapu finished talking to himself, he continued cooking. At this time, not far away, a very huge pirate ship was sailing here, aiming directly at the restaurant on the sea. Luffy was still eating crazily, and Sanji was also cooking. After Chen Feng sensed the situation outside, the corners of his mouth raised. If those guys come, it means that Hawkeye is not far away. I'm really looking forward to it. With a bang, the door of Hi Hi Restaurant was kicked open, and a strong man walked in against the light. Who is the boss here? This ship is occupied by our Krieg pirate group. All irrelevant personnel should leave as quickly as possible. Otherwise, there is no need to leave. Sanji, who was carrying the newly prepared food, placed the food in front of Luffy and walked towards the big man. He lit a cigarette and put it in his mouth. I don't care what pirate group you are, this is a restaurant on the sea, and I will not let you occupy it. If you are not here to dine, please leave quickly. Oh, who are you? Why do you want me to leave? The burly man is Krieg, the leader of the Krieg pirates. My name is Sanji. I'm just the chef of this restaurant on the sea. I'm not a big shot. So you're just a chef. Why don't you get out of here and try my artillery fire? Krieg's body transformed and several cannons appeared, aiming at Sanji. At this time, Chen Feng stood up, put his hand on the handle of the knife, and unsheathed the long knife. Everyone in the restaurant only felt that the air was constantly surging around them, and they didn't know what was happening. But Zoro at the dining table stared at Chen Feng intently, and then looked at Krieg. Chen Feng put away his long knife and walked towards the door of Hai Hai Restaurant. It's better to solve a problem like this as soon as possible. As soon as Chen Feng finished speaking, Krieg was about to take action, blood splattered all over his body, and he soon turned into a pile of scrap metal. The sound of scrap metal hitting the ground and the splash of red blood made it seem like time had stopped at this moment, but at this time, the sound of even speed footsteps was still ringing. When Chen Feng walked to the pile of scrap metal, the roar of a collapsed building rang in everyone's ears. Everyone woke up because of the huge sound, but they still didn't understand what happened. After Chen Feng walked to the door of the restaurant, he saw a small boat. There is a man wearing a feather hat on the boat, that is his target, the world's number one swordsman, Hawkeye. The eagle's eyes were also fixed on Chen Feng, and he had already felt the strong sword energy. When the two looked at each other, the airflow between them began to surge rapidly, and the seawater began to create larger waves. Zoro felt this strange aura and immediately ran outside. Hey, Zoro, what are you going to do? Usopp shouted in confusion. Luffy had not stopped eating yet. Sanji glanced at the green algae head who came over. He was not happy with this guy. He stopped Zoro. What do you want to do, you guy? You don't want to go out, do you? Get out of the way. Zoro pulled out his knife. Are you provoking me? Sanji held the cigarette in his hand without giving in at all. Zoro saw this and slashed directly. Sure enough, you make me very unhappy. Sanji immediately dodged Zoro's attack. 
Seeing that his sword failed to hit Sanji, Zoro rushed out without any hesitation. You guys, you really want to go out. Sanji put the cigarette in his mouth again and walked outside. After Nami saw this situation, she suddenly realized something. She immediately stood up and planned to see what happened. The rest of the people in the room also reacted one after another. Well, what happened? A customer asked. It's nothing. Please don't worry, customers. You can continue to dine, but please do not leave this restaurant. Zapu's voice sounded, and he had already walked out of the kitchen. After hearing Zapu's words, the other customers had no idea of going out to explore, but they also had no desire to eat. At this time, the only person in the restaurant who had the desire to eat was Luffy. Zapu looked in the direction of the door with a solemn expression and murmured to himself. That guy is probably the only one with such momentum. I hope Mr. Shinigami and that guy can fight at a distance, otherwise my restaurant may not be able to save. At this time, Zoro came outside the door and stared intently at a person on the boat. That guy is the goal of his trip to see, the world's number one swordsman, Hawkeye. Sanji has also arrived outside the restaurant, but he has no intention of causing trouble to Zoro now. Feeling the powerful collision of auras in front of him, his face looked a little lonely. Sure enough, the gap is still too big. Vice Captain, let me challenge that guy first. Zoro looked at Chen Feng. Chen Feng nodded and calmed down his momentum. He planned to give Zoro a chance. After all, if he were to strike first, Zoro might not have a chance to challenge. After Chen Feng regained his momentum, the one on the opposite side also instantly regained his momentum, and the airflow and sea surface quickly returned to normal. Zoro stared at the man in front of him. I went to sea to challenge you. Let me see how big the gap is between us. As soon as he finished speaking, he pulled out all the knives, and the three sword styles were ready. Zoro rushed towards the boat with all his strength. At this moment, Sanji's face showed a look of disdain. Are you going to challenge him just because you are a guy? You are really overestimating your capabilities. Afterwards, Sanji laughed at himself again, thinking that he was just like this green algae head, and he was overestimating his abilities. He turned to look at Shinigami who looked calm. At this time, Nami had also arrived at the door of the restaurant. She saw Zoro rushing out and thought to herself. Did that green algae head challenge others again? It's really boring. Wait, now seems like a good opportunity. Nami glanced at the deputy captain's back, then quietly stepped back. Just when she was about to return to the sea restaurant, Chen Feng's voice sounded. Miss Navigator, if you want to sneak away now, you will end up like the guy in the restaurant. When Nami heard these calm words, her body instantly stopped in place. The fate of the guy in the restaurant now appeared in her mind, and she felt cold and sweaty. Don't worry, Vice Captain, we are partners, how could I sneak away quietly? A flattering smile appeared on Nami's face. Seeing that Chen Feng didn't reply, Nami looked at Sanji beside him again. Chef, you haven't finished cooking yet. Go back and cook. Why are you standing there? Sanji was a little confused at this time, but he still nodded and his eyes turned into red hearts. Okay, beautiful lady, I will do it right away. I will supervise your cooking next, don't think about being lazy. Nami grabbed Sanji's hand and pulled him into the restaurant. Really, beautiful lady, Sanji's reason completely disappeared. Of course it's true, let's go quickly. Nami pulled Sanji and ran towards the kitchen without paying any attention to the pile of scrap metal next to their feet. Or to put it another way, Nami didn't dare to look at the pile of scrap metal at all. That might be her fate, but she swore that it would never be her fate. No one in the restaurant dared to look at the pile of scrap metal, and they selectively forgot about it. This pile of scrap metal is piled there alone again, but half a minute ago, it was a big man who threatened to occupy this place, his name is Krieg. Zapu moved his gaze from outside the door to the pile of scrap metal. Come two people and clean that thing up for me. Okay, chef. One chef took a broom and dustpan and began to clean up the pile of scrap iron. Another chef brought a large trash can to hold the scrap iron. While scrap metal was being cleaned inside, Zoro had already arrived near Hawkeye. After Hawkeye saw Zoro coming, a knife appeared in his hand. Are you kidding? Are you going to use this kind of thing against me? Zoro angrily slashed at Hawkeye. No matter how he slashed, 
the knife blocked all his attacks. There was nothing he could do. After seeing this situation, Zoro was very unwilling and began to deny himself. Soon, he gave up and made his choice. The scar on the swordsman's back, his shame, come on. Zoro closed his eyes. You are quite interesting. In this case, I will satisfy you. Hawkeye pulled out his black knife, and the long knife slashed across Zoro's chest quickly. Two knife marks appeared on Zoro's chest. After doing this, Hawkeye looked at Chen Feng. You should be Shinigami, the pirate hunter who has become famous in recent years. Chen Feng jumped into the air and headed towards the direction of Eagle Eye. You seem to be the world's best swordsman, and I want to hack you to death. Do you have any objections? Chen Feng looked at Eagle Eye with a smile. Then let's see what you are capable of. Hawkeye responded with a smile. That's right, you still have to speak with the facts. Chen Feng instantly pulled out his long sword, and the endless sword light flew towards Eagle Eye. Hawkeye quickly waved the knife in his hand to resist the attack. It seems that the one in your hand is also a black knife. It's really interesting. And judging from your previous sword energy, your strength is indeed worthy of my full strength. Hawkeye clenched the black knife in his hand and slashed forward, shattering all the sword rays that came from the attack. Almost in the blink of an eye, he appeared in front of Luofeng and slashed down with his long knife. Red light appeared on the Chenfeng knife, and it shot back at Eagle Eye. A crisp collision sounded, and Hawkeye was directly cut back. The Eagle Eyes that retreated stared intently at the red light on the Chenfeng knife. It's really interesting to leave no stone unturned. Hawkeye laughed. Save your strength, that's what a fool would do. As soon as Chen Feng finished speaking, a water column shot up into the sky, knocking the board Zoro was sitting on directly into the sky. Then, a second water column rose into the sky and hit Zoro's body directly. Under the relay of several water jets, Zoro successfully returned to the door of the restaurant. Then he was pulled directly into the restaurant by Usopp at the door of the restaurant. Zoro, are you okay? Usopp looked at the injured Zoro worriedly. I'm fine. Zoro opened his eyes and replied weakly. I didn't expect your dominance to reach this level. It's really unimaginable. Hawkeye stared at the opponent in front of him in surprise. Really, I didn't expect you to still have the energy to comment. Chen Feng said calmly. He instantly made another powerful slash, temporarily retreating Hawkeye. At the same time, the fragments of the broken ships around them continued to split, and then quickly formed knives one by one, with black metal light shining on the blades. These knives kept slashing towards Hawkeye. Eagle Eye continued to resist the attacks that kept coming, and looked at Chen Feng. Are you actually a user with fruit abilities? And the level of development is so high. Hawkeye already felt a little overwhelmed. Chen Feng had no intention of answering, and charged towards Hawkeye. The bloodthirsty knife in his hand took advantage of the gap in Hawkeye's defense and took advantage of Hawkeye's head. When Hawkeye saw this, his neck instantly turned black. He could no longer resist the knife, so he had to use his armed domineering force to resist. A harsh cutting sound sounded, and a bloodthirsty cut opened a half-centimeter deep hole in Hawkeye's neck. Hawkeye struggled to maintain his aura of armed domineering, not daring to let Chen Feng inflict deeper wounds. The knife in his hand immediately struck Chen Feng from bottom to top. Chen Feng withdrew his long sword, without any thought of evading it, and slashed down with the long sword again. Is this guy crazy, or is he very confident in his armament and hockey? Hawkeye couldn't figure out what this Shinigami was thinking. At this moment, Chen Feng's long sword and Eagle Eye's long sword hit the enemy almost at the same time. Hawkeye finally dodged, and a harsh cutting sound sounded. Chen Feng's long sword cut off half of Eagle Eye's left arm, which was fully covered with armed domineering energy, but Eagle Eye felt that his long sword didn't hit anything. Impossible, this feeling, what kind of fruit is that guy? Even a natural fruit can't stop Hockey's attack. At this time, another fruit's ability suddenly appeared in Hawkeye's mind. Is it a split fruit? No, absolutely impossible. The person with the fruit ability is still alive. But now there is no extra time for Hawkeye to think about these problems. Chen Feng's next attack has arrived. At this time, in the sea restaurant, Luffy had stopped eating and came to Zoro. Zoro, what's going on? How did you get hurt? Luffy's face was full of confusion. And where are the vice-captain and Nami? Why didn't you see them? 
After hearing what Luffy said, Usopp couldn't help but sigh that Luffy was so big-hearted and didn't know anything about such a big thing. I was stabbed by that guy Hawkeye. The vice captain is probably still fighting with Hawkeye. As for Nami, I don't know too much. After answering Luffy's question, Zoro forced himself to sit up. By the way, I still have to look at that guy Nami. I can't let that guy out of my sight. At this time, Nami's voice sounded. You green algae head is really too much. After suffering such a serious injury, you still want to spy on me. Who do you think I am, Nami? That's right, that green algae head, why do you speak to the beautiful Miss Nami like that? Believe it or not, I will beat you up. Sanji echoed Nami and said. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.